So basically, all right, the family talks. The idea is that, you know, we're not going to really get into kind of like general topics or like current events, po political stuff. It's more just like, you know, the things that you'd hear from your family, like growing up, you know, they give you like these life lessons casually when they mention, you know, you know, like, hey, you know, nephew, make sure that you, you know, do this or like your cousin will tell you, hey, let me tell you a secret. But just like basic, like life enhancing, you know, topics like from the ways that we do uh, things ourselves, you know, especially with experience that we may have, um, you know, what can we kind of give to uh, the viewers to, um, right. you know, to see if they can implement and enhance anything that they're already doing. So I really love the topic that you chose today, for example, because, you know, you would think or you would assume that people who um, consume this content, they probably, you know, they play games most likely in a competitive way, um, the way that we've organized, you know, competitive fighting games. Um, so I think it's a really good topic to start with, with, um, all the things that can affect your tournament. Oh my God, I'm dropping everything. Go ahead, it's your turn, bro. Go ahead and and, and <laughs> introduce introduce this topic you chose so I can start whooping you. There we go. <laughs> so it's a uh, tournament meta games, which is essentially everything. Uh, like I said before, it's like everything outside of the match that'll affect your performance. So uh, doesn't matter how good you are at breaking throws. It matters how much sleep you got. That's what a meta game is, essentially. Um, uh, one one definition of one, I guess. Mm -hmm. And Contextual. the first subtopic is sleep. Um, like getting the right amount of sleep before a tournament. Mm -hmm. And it could be hard to like actually manage to fall asleep uh, on a tournament night, right? Yeah. It's really important to get uh, whatever amount of sleep that you know you operate best with. Mm -hmm. And typically that's going to be about eight hours. Uh, our sleep schedules are actually on intervals of 45 minutes, so it's not exactly eight hours, but it's close enough. Good old circadian rhythm. I feel you. Right. So I think... And I... Uh, mm -hmm. the amount of sleep you get really impacts your ability to make decisions, uh, how much energy you have, and your reaction time. All of which are really important in a tournament. I really, th I think that um, it's interesting too that you say eight hours because a lot of people, they have different sleep quality, you know? Um, so eight hours, I think it's a good rule of thumb, but a lot of people will find that um, they might be able to get away with less. Some people might actually need a lot more um, than just the generic as well, you know? Yeah. And, uh, on, on, on top uh, of that... Take... Go ahead. Keep going. I was, I was just gonna say that, uh, I think it takes a little bit of experimentation. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Because, um, you, like, if you're just playing, like, your first tournament ever, um, you can't really expect to know, like, how much sleep you needed, you know? I wonder if, if you, I don't know if you know, but like, um, cause I don't, if sleeping too much would actually have an adverse effect on like tournament performance. Um, typically, uh, there isn't much of a danger to oversleeping. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect how groggy you are earlier mm -hmm. in the day. So let's say like you slept, uh, for 30 minutes longer than you normally would have. And you like cut off, uh, one of the cycles right yeah you're gonna wake up tired more tired than if you had not stayed in bed for that extra 30 minutes or whatever mm -hmm. um but i don't think you would play worse per se uh by getting more sleep okay i probably agree with you there i think maybe i was thinking of like um an aggressive amount of extra sleep like if you slept like you know a whole another like four hours kind of thing um and then you just were over rested and like almost lethargic but right. i think most of the time um it's not going to be like sleeping is not going to be a bad uh thing to have extra of like anything even good stuff is like 
you know, if it's not in moderation, it can still be a problem. But I think sleep kind of gets away from that. Right. But it's interesting, um, too, because, like, so are we thinking about, from a tournament standpoint, like, uh, esports? Or, like, what what's on the table for this conversation? Uh, mostly fighting games, but uh, I think any of the skills uh, or parts of the metagames for fighting games would be relevant in any esport. Or any sport, honestly. Okay. Well, so, because I was going to say, I, um, I feel like um, we have a, there's a big thing in tennis where we talk about how a lot of times people have won. Oh, jeez, I went the wrong way. People will win or lose their matches long before they ever step on court. A lot of that has to do with... Jeez, nice. A lot of that has to do with the training and the practice and the skills that they spend time on. But even it's it's also a comment on how players are preparing for their matches, and a lot of times we'll notice that. Um, uh, man, I I didn't know I screwed already. Uh, a lot of times we'll notice that the way that they prepare it actually changes um, what they're able to use from their practices as well. Right. And, you know, if someone just um, has a generic... preparation is another subtopic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so I won't get too much into it specifically, yeah. but uh, relative to sleep, um, as far as... Oh, it's so hard to land that combo we're talking. Ah! Oh, my God. I'm getting... I'm getting scared right now. Leave me alone! Um, but as far as... Uh, as far as in relation to sleep, right? Um, usually, because so, so for tennis, you have these international tournaments. So you'll go across the world, and 3 a.m. your time is when your match starts, right? But it's like six right. it's six p.m. at the in the country that you're in. So mm -hmm. you can't just sleep the day before and call that preparedness. Like you have to Absolutely. start like a week ahead. Start changing your sleep schedule. Start changing the times you're eating. When you're supplying yourself with energy. Even the times that you play, because playing in the morning, like practicing in the morning and playing a match in the evening almost have nothing to do with each other in tennis. You know, it's like it's a lot better to practice as closely to the situation that you're going to be in as possible. Um, so I wonder, like, if fighting games, like, if it's not as serious or what do you think on that? If, you know, the day before you kind of just change your sleep a little bit or just make sure you sleep enough in general um you think that's enough or do you think there's something kind of more specific uh that has um, to be regarded i think likely the uh time of day doesn't really matter it's more of like how alert are you mm. and how much like uh like sleep preparation for sleep is really important there I lost my train of thought. Let's see. <laughs> see, it's not I don't easy, think it's man. <laughs> like, right? Yeah, you like uh -huh. grabbed me and my brain stopped working. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so yeah. the time of day isn't quite as important, and you're not going to be able to mimic those situations as easily as you would in some other uh, sport, just because uh, you can't. Nervousness is going to be the main thing. And you can't really train for that. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you can't force yourself to be nervous. Yeah. In any given situation. But I do agree with you that good tournament players should be uh, adjusting their sleep schedule ahead of time. Like, as much as their lifestyle will allow. Like, whatever job they have. And yeah. Stuff, you know? It's huge. Like, I mean, in, and... in tennis, because of the international aspect... It's probably a little bigger um, and of course if you're that high level of a fighting game player then you're gonna be dealing with um, international tournaments just as much um, but even like if you're going to a local right it's kind of like you know it really does fe it, it feels like the amount of pr uh, preparation you put into it has directly to do with your expectation you know I mean outside of John's especially um, not to say like 
you know, you just don't sleep as much so that you can say, ah, oh, it's because I didn't sleep much. Right. Mm hmm. Where's my rage art? Oh my uh, god. I think that basically covers sleep. The next one is like food and water, like staying hydrated and whether or not you should play on a full or empty stomach or somewhere in between. And I don't really know the answer to the food question, mm -hmm. but I definitely know that you should be hydrated um, the same way that an athlete needs to hydrate. Because yeah. it's like, there's no downside to it other than like maybe having to use the restroom more often than you would like. Mm. And uh, obviously with physical sports, it's less of a, dang, I threw it. It's less of an issue because you're going to be sweating out that extra water. Mm -hmm. Um, but being hydrated and uh, allowing that to sort of fuel your brain and your body, yeah, I think will give you those extra milliseconds to react to things. Mm. And in so um, many sports, like esports, regular sports, like those those matches are made in those milliseconds. Like it might sound like an over exaggeration, but um, you know, maybe to somebody on the outside it would, but I think anyone who's played in any competitive setting, especially at um, above a beginner's level, like they know how important it can be to have the that you know any edge that they can get, um, you know, right. practically. The the difference between reactable and non-reactable is milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. It's, it's like so any advantage is valuable in that situation especially if you're min maxing and the uh field is like competitive mm -hmm. uh but as for food what do you think um like the the right way to go is there so for food i think that like you have to go into kind of this psychology of like being a human being it, your, is itself. Um, you have to like, there's a balance point, right? Where if you eat too much, okay, uh, let me preface it with this. Basically you have to have the perfect amount of, um, how is it called? Like, uh, when you're satiated as a noun, I don't remember the word, like sati right. satiety or whatever, but you have to be satiated it's perfectly to the point where you're not thinking about sustenance at all. Um, so literally, if you eat too much, you'll think about how full you are. And if you don't eat enough, you'll think about how hungry you are. And that's going to literally take brain power. Um, and it's literally going to take um, some of your thinking power away from what's right in front of you. Um, just as a human being, especially talking about food. It's a survival thing, so you're, you know, you're gonna have priorities no matter what. Unless you're playing this fighting game because it is feeding you, or it's like keeping you with a home, or one of your actual, like, you know, um, needs as a person, uh, you're not gonna be able to naturally prioritize it um, over something like hunger. So there has to right. be that perfect point where you're just like, I'm not hungry, but I'm not like overly fed either. Um, and treating food like too much of a priority to where I'm not thinking about what I need to be doing. Oh, wow. Oh, that extends. Oh, I was, I didn't even know I was dead. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, that's my take on food. I feel like, um, and then on top of it, and that's it's the right amount. That's food in general, right? And it's 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 not just quantity. That's a good follow up question. It's not just quantity; it's quality as well. Even if I have the perfect balance of food, if that food isn't working for me, then right. why did I eat? You know. So like, really knowing like what kind of energy your body like optimally performs on, um, and and knowing that it's different. You know, you can't just like say, oh, carbs gives everyone energy. I mean, like. In general, macro nu um, nutrition, 
It does. That's the function of a carb in your body. But everyone has different processing methods. Like their literal organs have different processing methods, timings, you know, abilities, um, you know, what have you. So you really have to know, like, uh, you know, what gets you going um, the best. And most people right. don't keep like food journals and stuff, you know, but I think it's really worth it for any athlete, esport or otherwise. Um, if you have a really good day, um, like to think about like what your condition was and what led to it. I think that doesn't happen enough um, and it should be done like way more often so that you can replicate it when you need to on purpose, like with intention. Yeah. Um. So there's like this thing where, uh, and I can't remember the study that I read, what it said, but like reaction time, uh, the difference between being hungry and uh, not hungry, like fed, and how that has an impact on your reaction time. The argument is that if you are hungry, your body goes into like search mode, you know? Mm, okay. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh, you like has something to do with like adrenaline um and while i don't know exactly what the uh conclusion was to it i do think it's worth talking about like what it could be mm -hmm. what it could be in what sense like what the conclusion could be so like, uh, I think that the idea of being faster at making decisions and stuff while hungry mm -hmm. is an outdated point of view. Mm. And the reason I say that is because uh, in the Bible, mm -hmm. it says, let your hunger fuel you, right? Oh, okay. And so I, I think the origin could come from that rather than like some scientific yeah. uh, study and yeah. it could be true you know mm -hmm. but I, I feel like there there are multiple reasons why people could say that right okay uh, in, in my opinion uh, with as much as I know about science in general mm -hmm. um, I think as like you said earlier as long as you've got the right amount and quality mm -hmm. of food in your system you should perform optimally compared to being like under fueled. Yeah, especially in a tournament because that's like a, a a marathon. You know, it's not just one match you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. It's a series and of matches. Exactly, and that probably would change the dynamic a lot too. Of, you know, what you would need. Like if you're gonna do like a one-off performance, or if you need like sustainable, you know, um, energy. But, okay, that's a good point, like, because I can see how, like, science kind of gets riddled with theology a lot, um, where people's beliefs become, like, accepted as, like, oh, something we actually tested. Um, so that's a good point. I think that uh, I probably agree with you that is outdated. Be and, and, okay, this is going to sound kind of conspiracy, right? But, or kind of, like, weird. But, like, in general, just as humans... Um, I think the way that technology has advanced now, we're seeing the biggest like need for um, kind of quick, quick response than we've ever had before. I mean, back when something like that sounds like it's from, it would be before a time when there was even anything that would need to be measured in like, like frames, for example, like 20 frames, you know? Right. Um, so yeah. it's like, oh, you know, faster reaction times. Um, actually, well, now I say that, I don't know. Cause I'm now I'm thinking of like table tennis, right? One of the fastest sports, um, out there, like the time that you have to react to that ball coming across the table is ridiculously small. Um, so like in some things I think maybe would refute what I'm saying, but I think overall, um, it, it could easily fall into that outdated category. Woo. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is that <laughs> like, you know, as people like we, we just have different things that we interact with and we as a species have gotten quick.
quicker in general to where it's it's at least insignificant. Even if there is a difference, it's not as much of a difference. Where if you're hungry, you're probably losing more than you need um, than to be like than to have. I can't remember the noun for satiated, which technically is a noun itself. But basically, we're not hunting anymore. We're not gathering anymore. Like our mm -hmm. lives don't depend on hunger as much as it ever did you know so i don't i yeah. think hunger itself has been nullified as a human response you see how much more coherent i get in the middle of rounds than when we're playing <laughs> i <Right>. hate this <laughs> but um yeah so i think that you know hunger is not really like we've, it's kind of been nullified for us so it's not really a driving um for it, especially uh, in america like in in such a first world or develop, you know, country. Um, I think that's just not something that you would see a player like depend on. But and not to say all Americans, of course, because there are American athletes who, you know, they've given up so many things to pursue their sport, for example, and um, they are actually going to be driven by hunger in that way because they've literally like bet their whole life on their. Um, progress in their in their sport um so right. then they you know they probably would uh have to you know like like we like we said in the beginning they would be the ones that would have to really determine you know what makes the most sense for them right um i think what you were saying earlier about how like Technology has progressed. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, oh, right. That's a high. Was that a mid? Oh, that um, looked like a mid. That's stupid. That, that's high. It, it was changed in season one uh, or mm -hmm. season two. It used to be a mid. Oh, okay. That makes um, sense. And th that leads into uh, energy drinks. Oh, Like geez. Red Bull yeah. and these like modern uh, tools. And like how helpful are they? compared to whatever damage they might be dealing mm. um, to your body or like your longevity as a player rather than um, because I, I don't actually know what all is in Red Bull. Caffeine alone shouldn't have much of an impact right. over time uh, just because of the history of tea and caffeine. Uh, it's actually been found to be pretty beneficial uh, in most cases. But there are a lot there's a lot of caffeine in those drinks. Mm -hmm. And there are also other things that are stimulants, right? So, uh, the, the, the pros and cons of stuff like that, what are they, do you know? Yeah. So, in, in my opinion, the, the cons are too heavy. Um, why did I think, I thought I was the one in rage. <laughs> um, <laughs> the cons are too heavy because when you look at those things, so this is, I'm, I'm not a scientist at all, and I've never really uh, directly or specifically researched um, this. So I'm kind of just kind of speaking on hearsay, um, mm -hmm. but it's like hearsay well, that I, I believe, I've done right? research so. on stuff like this, so I'll let you know if you say anything that's like Ridiculous. very obviously wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't so, believe that whiffed. <laughs> is the angle of the wall. So, yeah. basically, from a, from a layman's standpoint, like, just looking at energy drinks, knowing the stigma around them, um, I would say that, like, some of the ingredients that I've seen, um, you know, in passing on cans and whatnot, um, as a consumer, you would see those ingredients that have to do with the energy, uh, like, reuptake and the energy, um, you know, deliverance to your body in other foods, like, other whole foods that you could get those same sources from. And then what you are also getting are all these synthetic things that they put in them to, you know, make them taste great or make your brain respond a certain way. So you want more, mm -hmm. you build a dependence on them. It's an overexciting of your uh, receptor so that you start depending on it. Um, there's just no reason, you know, not even in moderation um, to think that, you know, like this is a, a, a necessity. You know, not even like good idea, bad idea. It's like it just doesn't. You just don't need it. So um, the cons are, are are heavy. 
Especially considering the fact that once you do get dependent on them. Oh, man. Oh, man. You're so good. Once you do get dependent on them, um, they stop working anyway. So you can't right. really uh, say they were really that good of an idea in the first place. Oh, no. Don't let it be you. Um, you, so yeah, you can't even regard them as like a short-term solution, um, because they make themselves obsolete so fast. Uh, and what are the pros that you even get from them anyway? I think that's my point, is that any pros that you would get from an energy drink are pros that you could get from so many other food sources without the cons. Um, right. so they're completely obsolete in my opinion. Yep. Well, I can say for one thing, the uh, mainstream energy drinks, such as uh, Red Bull, uh, mm -hmm. specifically Red Bull actually, and a few of the ones for s athletes, um, aren't as crazy. Okay. Um, as a lot of the other ones. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. the Anakin fanboy. There's not as much of a uh, huge drawback. I think you absolutely can abuse those drinks mm, yeah. and like lessen their effectiveness because of it. Um, but I think that that's not how they're used most of the time. Mm. How, how are they used? Unless like you're drinking 12 of them in one night or like <laughs> six. Yeah. I, I think in a day you should probably only be drinking a maximum of two. Uh, but not two a day, just, like, right? Off the top of my head, so that's not like in a single day and single yeah. twenty-four hour period, two of them. Mm -hmm. You don't. I can't see a situation, and where more than that is healthy. <coughs> yeah, I've heard I've heard similar things. Um, again, like loosely researching it, but like they say, literally once you get to that third can, you're actually um, teetering on dangerous effects to your body, like three cans within a 24 right. hour period your body just doesn't have the time to like filter through how much stuff is in there you know but like i don't know mm -hmm. if it's a if it's a jamaican thing like i've heard family members of mine say like well you know if, if three is dangerous then why would you even drink one you know um and obviously i know the flaws behind that kind of a statement i understand it's it's used. yeah like if you think about any type of medicine right right mm-hmm like if you can overdose on it why are you taking it at all like, yeah that's not well it's not how numbers but I, i'll tell you though again is a jamaican thought is the same thing because like really against pharmaceuticals because of that I exact see. fact yeah it's it's literally yeah. that way um it's like well if it can kill you for for two why would you even take the regular dose um kind of thing a lot of uh, uh jamaicans will actually take half doses of medicine to still look for the effects right but then like not build like as much of a dependence and also somewhat of a conspiracy theory um thinking that oh they probably calculate like this amount so that you get dependent on it and keep taking it so if you take less then you'll be less likely to um you know want to keep using it in that way or need it i did not know that claudio has that unblockable spring kick thing <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> um, Sorry. No, you're Sorry. good. You're good. <laughs> that was, that's funny. But, but yeah. So then, so then, I am a little biased in my upbringing, right? Uh, against energy drinks, um, in total. You know, I mean, even the 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 more um, vanilla ones, like Gatorade, for example, or Powerade. Um, a lot of like people that I know or like family members that I'll have. They see that as like a, um, almost like a dessert, you know, like a candy, like candy a, as a drink or liquid candy, you know, they don't actually, right. they would never regard it as like something even an athlete would need or they would regard it as like, okay, when an athlete wants to make money, they get this sponsorship and it's good enough for the, like the casual um, athlete kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, 
and you had just mentioned like Powerade and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important uh, discussion to have too. Like, um, over the course of a day, right? Yeah. Uh, isn't like Powerade and like sort of drinks like that just more efficient at hydrating you? Or what? What's about it? Um, you said what? What was the last part? Like, is it more efficient at hydrating you? Um. I don't know if I would know. Like, you mean uh, in their design? Yeah, like, what's the point of them? Why would you drink Powerade or Gatorade over a glass of water? Oh, okay. So... I know the electrolytes and whatever. Right. So, very yeah, very specifically, um, the only use, like... So, for me personally, is that if I take an energy drink like that, um, it's more of a recovery drink. So I wouldn't really use it for performance, which is why I think I think Gatorade knows that, which is why they came up with their performance line, which marketed as like you can drink this in the middle of what you're doing and it'll keep you going. Right. Um, I think literally in the way that they they have it, if you took like, you know, the Gatorade bottles, the regular, I think they're like 16 ounces and they have the little bulb at the top. Um, yeah. If you drink that amount, like that bulb of it that would be enough and then you wouldn't need to drink any more until afterwards and the merit is that it'll give you more of those minerals at a faster rate um what you'd get from water your body has to synthesize that the natural way that it would water which has to do with making sure that that water is room temperature or like not room temperature but you know your body's internal um natural internal temperature so that it can actually uh start using it in the body if you drink cold water as an athlete like a physical athlete um you're not really getting anything from that because you actually your body has to heat up um in order to um get that water to the right temperature and then you've defeated the purpose because you probably drank that water to cool down and then now you're heating your body up because of it you know right. but with gatorade and stuff like that it's not just electrolytes it's really about the salt like the sodium the fact that that sodium can can really directly get into your system, um, it'll be a lot faster for your body to start using that salt, using the um, the sodium and the chloride to um, geez, <laughs> sorry, to make uh, <laughs> to function the organs that it's using it for, right? Right. Um, so that's the merit. It's like if you okay. <laughs> my point right so the merit is that if you Dang. oh there's an extension the merit is that if you've <laughs> done a physical activity and you really need to recover you really need to get a lot of minerals back pretty quickly then um that's the way to go like just water might not get you there uh in a reasonable amount of time but this is also assuming that you've been hydrating anyway, you know, because a lot of water consumption, it has to do with um, your natural kind of water tempo. Oh, man. Right. Um, so if you if you've been hydrating normally that day, but then you've been doing more than you normally do, then your natural water intake system needs some help. Um, it needs some milk, as the memes would say, but right. not actually milk. Right. So. You get Gatorade because it lets you um, match your increased. Uh, it lets you match your increased activity with an increase in mineral uh, consumption. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. But that's it. That's it. That I, I would never tell someone to get an energy drink because they're about to perform. I'd never tell someone to get an energy drink to, to boost their ability. You know, it's really, it has a lot more to do with afterwards. If, oh, you mean like for Gatorade, Powerade specifically? Um, yeah, 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 those specifically. I don't know about all the other ones that much. Um, I, I would say if you were in like a, a top eight match, uh -huh. um, the difference that a Red Bull or some similar drink would provide mm -hmm. would probably be enough to give you a win if everything else was perfectly even. Oh, okay. 
So like, if they drank a glass of water mm -hmm. and you drank uh, something like a Red Bull, yeah, I and everything else is even, I think you would win. Huh. Uh, just because you're more alert and your brain has a little bit more energy to work with. Um, and it's like wired, you know? Yeah. So it's definitely like exactly performance enhancing, you know, drugs. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. Um, I could, I could probably like agree with that and see that. I think, well, I never really would disagree with that in the first place. I definitely wouldn't recommend it, like I said, but um, I could see that happening because it is, it does kind of put your your body into overdrive. Um, and then, of course, the reason I wouldn't recommend it is because, uh, you know, that might work for that top eight. But then, if you have to do that every time you get to top eight. I would hope that there right. would be other ways that, you know, you could find that edge for yourself, you know? Uh, without what you, you what you would essentially be losing. Even the fact that, like, um, you know, it, it kind of... I'm trying to be, like, fair at the same time. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, but... I just feel like, because I don't want to be too harsh and, and like act like, you know, it's like, oh, you can't win without your, you know, without your special juice. Because um, that's not the case for sure. Or it's not, that's not the situation. Well, okay. If you're at, okay, well, first, if it isn't against the rules and your objective is winning, then there's nothing wrong with doing it. And I have. <laughs> yeah. Like, regardless of what it is, even if it's like a double-edged sword or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, then it's still fine. Like, and I think if you're not doing it, if you have some, like, reason, uh, like, for ego or whatever, then you're, you're like, you're not a good competitor yeah that's a good point that's a good point too like, like you're gonna get left behind at some point if that's your attitude mm -hmm. yeah it's like the people that are mad about hitboxes or the 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 cross-up like mm -hmm. that makes sense um kind of like like an anime mentality right it's like oh we've got to you know keep our morals but like our morals aren't actually about morality it's like a it's a traditional thing you know mm -hmm. when it's like a, um you know we got to be able to be proud of the way that we do things but it's like um no results we need results guys okay yep. I mean, you know, <laughs> don't don't get too crazy and, and start, the, you know, the, doing. Like, manager comes back and is like, "Yeah, I appreciate your spirit, but our numbers are pretty low this month." Literally. So, so uh, get your special juice. You know, Deku, we're gonna need you to get roided up. Uh, Deku. The, the nurse is waiting inside. Literally, <laughs> the lips are ready, but right. <laughs> <laughs> but the um, so not to go so far to be immor immoral. Um, you know, but like you said, if it's within the rules, you know, then um, yeah, it definitely uh, you know you should be looking for uh, if, if it's whatever within edge. the rules and not a gray area. I think gray areas are, uh, mm -hmm. you know, exactly that gray areas, and you don't yeah. you don't really want to operate in those situations because if you get reliant on something in a gray area, and then yeah. a rule change happens, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, even and honestly, that's kind of where I was coming at with my sentiment was thinking about those gray areas. Even if there's not a rule change, like it's exactly like you said, like we don't want you to have to be operating within those, you know? We don't want asterisks on your um, your victories. But at the same time, it's like, you know, um, if it's just an implied asterisk, then don't care about it as much. Right. If you're trying to put an asterisk on yourself, like you won, you know, you got, you got to win. Like that's what, that's what you should be thinking okay. about. How do you do that? What? I always miss it. I don't understand. There we go. Figure it out. Oh my god. That's what I, look. You should have been dead already. Don't be too bad.
Um, I forgot it was a high. <laughs> How do you forget? Oh, because I haven't been ducking it. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know. You're so funny. How do you not duck there? Oh, any hop things. So, um, so that, yeah, that was where I was going, is that, you know, really, like, coming away from any gray area situation. Right. Um, that, you know, uh, you'd want to get that top eight, like, because you can consistently get top eight, or wait until you can consistently get top eight. Um, you know, without having to feel like you need to, uh, you know, help yourself along, especially if you're like early on. <laughs> Did you know that would hit? That was messed up. <laughs> I, I figured you didn't know about <laughs> I that. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> uh, shout out yeah, to thoughts I guess, of himself. Uh, moving on to the next, right? Moving on to the next one is, uh, like physical health in general. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in my personal opinion, I think the most relevant part of that for uh, uh, fighting games specifically, and I guess any other esport, is cardio. Uh, having a low resting heart rate will uh, really, I think, empower your ability to stay calm under pressure. And yeah. I think it is like a direct benefit to your clutch factor. Uh, like, some people, you know, like their heart is like. Uh, beating really fast and they have like adrenaline and stuff like that mm -hmm. but that just means that you're like performing near your limit yeah right so if you don't ever tap into that part uh or you don't do it as often i think it means you're in better shape than if you are doing it. because there is a thing where like after adrenaline uh leaves your system you're like tired and you perform worse mm -hmm. so it's like you don't just want to uh, to have that happen like immediately. You need it to be like a an actual panic button um, that that your body has. And uh, cardio, I think, is the best way to make sure that the panic button is actually for emergencies. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. It's more useful to have a healthy heart than it is to have big muscles, I think. Well, useful for what would be the argument? Like, uh, being an esports athlete. Yeah. No, for sure. Like, unless you're weightlifting, you know? But you know what's or really... if it's like your... Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting uh, is that... Your, your lifestyle choice. With, uh with more muscle with with better developed muscles you actually find a lot more um body efficiency and a lot of people especially athletes themselves especially if we're talking about um the heart rate right um controlling the heart rate, i think that's a really interesting topic but then it also has to do with your breathing which also has to do with your lungs and your cardiovascular yeah. ability right that's why those things are connected cardio is for your heart and vascular is for your um the vascularity of your lungs right am i dead i'm dead so um the way that your muscles work and if they're more developed they'll be better at oxidizing um the air and more efficient as well so like if you think about um for example uh the breathing during a match you know and you're just more in shape like you'll be less likely to breathe heavily even in a panic situation which would affect your heart rate um at the same time that you should be thinking about controlling it you'll also have less that you need to control on top right. of it you know so i think it's almost like it's hard to talk about one without the other what a backdash no okay <laughs> <laughs> um it's it's hard I'm crushing all my stuff yes <laughs> it's hard to talk about one without the other um because i think they really go hand in hand i think someone who probably like is a runner right but they don't have like muscles that are that well developed will struggle will have the same like um obstacles as someone who like you know has that strength where their muscles make their body really efficient um, but then they, they may not have like the actual pure cardio, um, ability. 
I do think I would give the edge to, just like you said, someone with more of a heart ability, like able to control their heart rate because they can trick themselves into thinking they're in a better condition than they actually are. Um, I think it, like physically, I think what I'm saying is physically they're going to be the same, but I do acknowledge that I think mentally um, someone who doesn't have that heartbeat going, they're really going to feel like, you know, they're not in any type of trouble. Right. And that would make sense. Um, could you go over again the uh, the benefits like of having developed muscles? Well, so whenever you develop your muscles, basically a developed muscle in this context is one that can uh, go without fatiguing, right? Oh, nice. You're right. so smart. So to go without fatiguing, it has to do with um, how that muscle is pulling oxygen out of the... Uh, Basically, it's how the, the muscle is pulling oxygen out of your bloodstream because um, your red blood cells are what's delivering that oxygen to those organs to make them work. And then the more that they can pull, the less uh, lactic acid is going to be built up in those muscles, which is what causes that fatigue feeling and that feeling of soreness as well um, in the first place. So when you're in the middle of a, of a competition, the way that the blood flows through your body has to do with your heart like the the pumping of your heart and your heart is going to be kind of supported by those muscles if your body is um used to like overly relying on the heart to um deliver a lot of what it needs then your heart's going to have to spend that time working oh jeez can't believe that wall spot. yeah dude i can't and it broke like the, broke the wall geez. it was a mile away um so yeah, basically your your heart's gonna have to spend time and energy on just that. So then it won't be able to be as easily controlled um, by uh, by the athlete because of how much right. work it has to do. That makes sense. Um, so, like, basically, uh, the general idea is that taking care of your body, of course, will give you better results. Mm -hmm. um, and I, because, you know, we're, uh, just like taking care of your car will make your car work better, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, humans are essentially machines with, like, some lumpy wet thing in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, bone mix, man. <laughs> you know, right? I feel you. But and uh, the next, the next <coughs> part was uh, is getting into more of mental stuff, mm -hmm. and I think that's a little bit more interesting, just because the other stuff is like more of a hard science. Yeah. Um, one thing is uh, the, the first one is nerves. Like, mm -hmm. tournament nerves. How do you get over being nervous? And I, I have my own method, um, mm -hmm. but I, I want to hear your take on it. Like, how do you, how do you deal with uh, being nervous, like, before or during a game? Yeah. Not as much daring, but, like, before a game, whenever you sit down. Yeah. So are you asking me specifically how I do it or how I would – or how I think people, like, do it in general or should do it? Or I guess do it in general. Um, both. Uh, okay. So for my method – um, is a method we all know and love when I get nervous. Um, I just give myself a bunch of excuses and then I'm not nervous anymore. It's very simple. Tried and true method. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I, you know, I grew up in the gifted program. So it's kind of just like all you have to do is expect a lot. And then when you don't reach it, it's like, ah, oh, you know, of course. And then you hate yourself. And then you wonder why you like this. So then you get to the next part of my answer, which is what you should be doing, right? Um, and it's basically like there's a bunch of different methods. And depending on, I think, actually, the type of learner that you are uh, will change what is the best method for you to, um, to get over nerves, right? The first method is uh, it's kind of a cop-out, but it's like not even worry about getting over the nerves. It's actually to understand 
why you're nervous so that you can accept it. Um, I think that's a huge right. thing. If you are able to identify where your nervous feeling is coming from, um, then you'll do yourself a lot of favors. Uh, and because mo most of the time, why do we feel nervous is because we're doing something that we've never done before. And we're probably doing something that scares us, you know, but those kind of things are the best things to do. Um, most of the time, you know, cause it's a new experience. And there's nothing wrong with that. So it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of a cop out, but if you can acknowledge that, you know, you're nervous because um, you're doing the right thing, you know, by doing something new and, and opening your, your, ex your perceptions and your experience, then you'll accept that nervousness as just part of, uh, of a good thing, you know? Um, yeah. Another way is not to acknowledge the nervousness in order to accept it, but in order to attack it or to tackle it, right? A lot of people, I think, they get nervous, but then they can't identify why. So it's a mystery, and then that mystery, it makes it insurmountable. But in, if they can acknowledge, um, you know, what's making them nervous, what specifically, not in a way, like I said, not in a way to like be like, oh yeah, this is okay, but to be like, all right, this is exactly why I'm going to not feel so bad anymore you know this is why i'm nervous and i need to not oh sorry you need to not yeah sorry sorry <laughs> I, I got a i got a notification that's kind of weird but um i need to not i need to not um let this uh, hinder me you know even if i feel mm -hmm. nervous or because i feel nervous um you know you kind of like you play uh uh yeah, you, you, you throw it on your Uno reverse card, you know, and you turn that nervousness and progress it into kind of like a like a challenge spirit or com like a, per, you know, competitive um, attitude about what you're about to do, you know? Yeah. But identifying um, what it is is, is is my answer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I handle mine a little bit differently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think most of the time when I'm nervous, it's because I have expectations of myself that I that aren't really possible to uh, to reach. Like my expectations, uh, how I want to perform, are too high compared to what I can actually do. Mm. And uh, the way I get over it is I just I sit down and I take ten really deep breaths. Okay. Um, and I just stop thinking about anything other than the match that's about to happen. I, I don't think about like the outcome of the match. I think about like, hey, I'm about to play this match and I have to like be focused on it if I have a chance of winning. And my attitude is to like, give myself the best uh, percentage chance possible of winning uh, whatever match I'm going into. Mm -hmm. uh, like. And it seems like I do that pretty much all the time. It just takes me a little while to to actually do. Like in my first match in uh, yesterday in it, in Jacksonville mm -hmm. and um, in Atlanta, right? My first matches, I was way too nervous and I didn't do like the deep breaths thing. And I was just like, dang, I'm like, I lost because I was nervous, right? And it's okay to recognize that as a reason. You're not giving, like, you're not cheating yourself as a player by admitting that you lost because you were nervous and it was messing up how you play. Mm -hmm. um, so why does nervousness come about? I think for one thing, it's because of expectations. Um, another thing, like, you're nervous because you have to do something that you don't think you'll be able to do. If you thought oh. you could do it, you wouldn't be nervous. Yeah. It's like as simple as that. Um, and instead, you'd be confident. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. managing your expectations uh, is the first step to get rid of, getting rid of that nervousness. Yeah. And understanding that it's also okay to be nervous because that's half of the fun of a tournament is like <laughs> dealing with those tournament nerves like at least for me like yeah. that like 
there's nothing else that gets me as nervous in a good way, you know? Um, yeah. It's part of the, the challenge. It's, right, yeah. I feel you. And it's kind of exciting to be nervous about how you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, I don't know, succeeding even though you weren't sure of how it would go. Yeah, that's the best success for sure. Nice. And that's the thing too, like that's kind um, of where like I you know, it was kind it's kind of a joke about, you know, like gifted background, but that's kind of what gets desensitized um for you first is the idea of like I can't do this. Um for better or for worse. Like there's good there's pros and cons to that, but on the con side, like you never get to feel satisfied with anything that you even do accomplish. So then you start you stop chasing things that you might not accomplish and you get dependent on that feeling like I'm only going to do the things that I know for sure that I can do, you know, um, and then anything that you get nervous about, it's literally exactly that train of thought that you just set up is I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? Because I might not be able to do this. Why might I not be able to do this? Um, because I've never done it before. And then at that point, uh, like a lot of people who are desensitized to that as a normal situation, they break and then they're just like, okay, let me give myself this excuse so that if I find out that I can't do this, um, it's not like a weird situation versus I feel like, right. um, a better mentality is the one that you're bringing up is just to acknowledge is because I've never done this before. Um, and it's okay that I'm nervous even, uh, and then that's it. Like, it's not anything past that. It's not that you have to convince yourself. It's just. I'm nervous, and that's just something that's happening right now. Oh my god. Cringe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think I'm a, a little bit different where uh, I only do things uh, typically because I don't... It's something that I can't do, right? So, like, whenever I'm playing games like Dark Souls, I'm having fun because it's challenging, and I want to lose until I win. Like, I'm perfectly okay with, like, failing something over and over and over. Whenever I get anxious or upset is whenever I know that there's not a second chance. Oh, uh, that's bro. why I don't like playing online, mm -hmm. right? Um, and... I'll get salty, like, after a tournament match whenever I lose half the time. Uh, just because I know that there's no run back, I'm out of the tournament. Yeah. Um, better luck next time. But, uh, for whatever reason, tournament losses are way easier for me to handle than, like, losses in casual matches or something. And that's hard to... <laughs> it's a high. Bro. <laughs> um, I'm scamming you, man. I was like, in the middle of you were talking, I realized that Claudio can't punish back one, two, for some reason. Oh, yeah? Do it again. Ah. <laughs> he can't punish it with a jab, I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I had time to Atlas Hammer. That was pretty cool. Okay, there we go. Um, and you know, but so that was literally uh like one of my oh, great with punish, dang dude. Things with um dealing with nervousness, and it, we're kind of both saying similar things. Is that you know it, it has to do with acknowledging you know what it's all of, like what it's about like what is this nervousness for. Why do you feel it um, kind of thing? But I think you, you brought up. Uh... It's um. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you go back. Don't hate so far. Man. 
Uh, whoops. <laughs> I really didn't mean to get that quiet, sorry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but, so you brought up something interesting, too. And it's like the physical aspect of nervousness, right? Um, with your breathing technique, it's like sometimes you don't even have to, t to tackle the, the mental side of how nervous you are if you can handle your physical response to it like taking yeah. deep breaths slowing down your heart rate like not even feeling like how nervous you are or kind of like forgetting about it or making your body's response um you know getting that under control so then you kind of trick your mentality into like you know i'm rested or i'm fine like nothing's going on right now um that's another method too is just like really separating yourself from um where you're at and sending yourself to like having a place to go to um to replicate that um situation so like a lot of uh physical athletes what they'll do is when they learn how to meditate they create uh they create a, a, a headspace like that where they can kind of just return to in order to um maintain like whatever mental state they're in right and there's two different applications to it one of the applications is in order to go back to normal so they're at a certain oh come on you're gonna convert okay so they're at a certain nope. mental state <laughs> shut up so they're at a certain mental <laughs> state right and then they um they want to go back to normal from from negative so then they have a mental state for that. But then they also have, like I said, like a day when they're just playing out of their mind and they want to return to that as well. And there's two different kind of uh, situations or there's two different mental states that they reserve for themselves to enter each. Like if you're completely negative, it makes sense to go back to normal before you try to play at your height. Because if you try to jump right. and skip steps, maybe you'll reach it, but then it'll be such a volatile um, situation that you're likely not to um, maintain it. Is what you usually find. Dang. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, the way you mentioned that, I, I didn't even um, think about it until now, but whenever I am getting over my nervousness, uh, my first reaction is like okay how you're feeling doesn't matter right mm -hmm. you just forget about that and then uh just slow down your heart rate so that your hands stop shaking and you can actually do things mm -hmm. and play your match yeah. and uh that it's that combined with the music i listen to which mm -hmm. help helps me to like calm down mm -hmm really does help me escape to, to where you were saying that like in in my headspace I, i'm just in the match like i am my character basically yeah which sounds really anime but you know, <laughs> also kind of sick yeah <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> um but no literally it's exactly that and it's like imagine if you're feeling that kind of nervousness and then all of a sudden you start trying to have like your most perfect execution right from that state of mind like it's not going to happen you know yeah. like i think it's really smart of you to think on perp like with intention like you know let me let my hands stop shaking first and then let me get back into the game you know as my character and like um kind of dive in again before i really start thinking about like um you know i'm gonna play like insane right now and it's right. important because it uh a lot of times when you do that, if you don't do that, I mean, you end up um, like putting yourself in a cycle because you'll be in a negative kind of mental uh, state state of mind. And then you'll try to go back to perfect. And then all of a sudden um, you start dropping stuff or you start missing stuff or making like stupid mistakes. And then you're right back in that negative uh, mental state of mind. And then you try to get out of it by going back to perfect. And before you know it, like you're um you're making like better plays against yourself than any opponent ever would you know right yeah 
Um, the next, the next topic was uh, attitude. Like, oh jeez. <laughs> what about attitude? <laughs> <laughs> Having an attitude that'll help you to win and uh -huh. to not lose, right? So you don't want to lose twice. If you have a bad attitude, every loss you take, you're going to lose again because of that same reason. Um, you want your losses to only happen once. <laughs> and yeah. attitude is the way you do that. If you have a good attitude, you're only going to lose the same way as many times as you, as you let yourself. But with a bad attitude, you're not even going to admit that you lost. Mm. You're like cheating yourself. Mm. Um, and it's kind of like a, a nebulous... Uh, like thing to think about whenever you're considering tournament uh performance right but i think it's super important yeah so there's two sides of that and I, this is a beautiful question that you're asking um with attitude over a loss so you are you specifically asking about the attitude of a loss or the attitude both. of going to attitudes a over losing and winning i think if you have the wrong attitude then your wins aren't going to help you as much right like you're going to be like oh yeah i'm like the best right <laughs> and you're not going to admit that there were flaws in your in your win and yeah that you could have performed better no 100%. i think you can't ever be world class at anything mm -hmm. if you don't take anything away from your wins yeah 100 percent and especially because in a competitive setting, I see so many athletes, so many competitors, so many gamers, they de they determine their ability in a sport or in a game based on who's around them. And they're completely comfortable yeah. with that. And only that, you know, to the point where they only keep people around them that will feed the attitude that they already have and want to keep. Um, and they never, like, play outside of that or challenge themselves. Um and they just, they live there. They operate there. I see it a lot in tennis. Like, I hate to say, but a lot of people. So in tennis, right, there's a national rating system that will tell you based on your history how good you should be um, in general and then who you should be playing against. And people go so far out of their way to make sure that their ranking stays low so they can continue most often playing against Wait, people really yeah 100 percent, dude i literally oh just watched God. i literally just watched a podcast um on essential tennis is a youtube channel um they actually got the coordinator at usta which is the united states tennis association um to and they, it was like an hour-long podcast about what are you doing about this you know um it was really informational they're actually trying to like in the near future um take care of it because it's a big problem people will literally uh they sandbag you know so they'll play their whole right. season and win everything and then they'll lose systematically here and there so that the algorithm because they have to use an algorithm because it's a national sport um will get tricked into thinking like oh, okay they're winning but they're not winning by much they're not landslide victory you know their opponents so um we're gonna keep them at this level and um it happens all the time so you'll be paying to play on a team at a certain level like let's say 4-0 is is how the ratings go so you'll get on a 4-0 team and your opponent is clearly 4-5 but when you look at their um even when you play the match against them like they drop the first set against you and all of a sudden the second and third set they're playing like out of their mind um but that's their actual level so then the algorithm shows you know oh it was a back and forth Kind of thing so then yeah they belong in 4-0 um but they pretty much just gave away that game so that they could stay there and i think that's a problem in like uh sports in general at like a non-professional level i mean at the professional level you know you don't see it as much just because of how much you lose when you get caught you know right um not that it doesn't exist but it's just not as uh as seen right but in, a, in an intermediate to above intermediate level, it happens a, a lot. People, like, want to win. And not because they earn the win, but because they want to win. And, like, that's it. Yeah. That's a period there. That's the end of the sentence. I want to win. <laughs> like, however that happens, you know? Um, so I think that's attitude crazy. is... A, is Yeah, and I think attitude has a lot to do with it. So if you can't win and acknowledge, like, what actually led to that win, but also... 
like what else you should be doing like where should you go from there like if a win is just the end point for you then that that's going to be the end point for you you know unfortunately that win is going to be the end point you're not learning how to win in general or how to win in the future if you find someone who's more skilled as an opponent you're just like that win is it for you now yeah. if it's like the highest level of that sport then yeah that's probably okay honestly um and even i I'd, I'd have to qualify that with the fact that the greatest players in in a lot of sports it's still not you know you you win the nba finals you're still going over your game film thinking about how you could have done better you'll probably win nba finals again the next year and then when there's a hot shot that comes out of college who's you know trying to change the game you'll still be on top of the game because you you didn't just get satisfied with um you know your level of uh, against who you were playing with at that time for example you know right you've won um savannah tech in five months um but you're still looking past that and it's letting you you know not uh it's letting you do uh better at these um other events and other cities with other scenes still talking about the 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 best run you've had in Atlanta, <laughs> but definitely, I mean, top eight in Jacksonville, right? I mean, that kind of stuff. If you just felt like, oh, I'm the best in, in an entire city, then you definitely would have what we're talking is the wrong attitude um, right. moving forward, you know? Yeah. And then on the other side of it, oh my God, the people who have the wrong attitude about losing, Jesus. Okay, so, <sighs> so these people- wait, wait, wait. Uh, real quick, real quick. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, whenever you were saying that, it made me realize that, um, like, so I don't like losing whenever I feel like I should have won or, like, that I'm a good enough player that I could have beaten whoever I was playing against, mm, right? Mm -hmm. That's when I get salty. Okay. Um, and I'm mad at myself. I'm not mad at the person I'm playing against. And I, I realized that just now because... I am completely okay with playing somebody like King Ray Jr. Mm -hmm. and losing 30 to 0. Yeah. Right? I will keep rematching him until he gets tired of playing. All right? Yeah. Um, and I'll do that for any player. Like, I do not care. That's, like, that's how I beat Dark Souls bosses. That's how I, like, <laughs> yeah. that's how I've done everything I've ever done. You know? It's just by trial and error. Like, we're going to sit here. We're going to, like, just lose until we win. And, um... It made me realize that the difference is that whenever I'm playing against somebody that I think I am better than, or that like maybe I am and I know it, but I lose anyway mm -hmm. um, because I'm not playing as a, like I'm not good enough. Basically, I can't win 100% of the games because yeah. I'm not that much better. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm just a little bit better. Yeah. Um. So my goal whenever i'm playing those people uh is to win mm -hmm. but my goal when i'm playing like king ray jr is to improve it's not to win and right. so i don't get mad mm. and that that sort of attitude of like uh being entitled to my win versus uh yeah. certain players right yes, sir. or feeling entitled uh -huh. is a, a really tough toxic like mentality to have yeah and it, it made me realize that like I could get rid of a lot of the grief that this game gives me uh, just by going into each match with the uh, intent to improve. Right. Like, uh, unless it's a tournament match, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to try to win. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if it's like a casual match or online, mm -hmm. right? If there's no money on the line, yeah, then I, I should be trying to improve rather than trying to win. That's a whole nother, like... Because they aren't uh, mm -hmm. exclusive yeah exactly i mean they are exclusive mm -hmm. or whatever the saying is yeah they're yeah, mutually ex no i know what you mean um but it's exactly how you say because that's a whole nother thing uh again in the tennis world is that there are these types of players that are affectionately called pushers right and it's people who they don't necessarily put much action on the ball themselves what they'll do is they'll take whatever energy that you've given the ball and they'll kind of just shove it back to you, right? Um, and it's actually really hard to play against most of the time um, because you have to generate your own pace on the shot. This is a quick little tennis thing, right? So people will play against a pusher 
and they'll be like, man, I'm so much better than them. I hate that I lost, right? Um, in tennis. And it's easy to kind of discern, like, if you feel like you're better than someone. Um, because it's not so results-based. You can literally see, like, wow, they don't have any form. They don't have any, you know, they're not hitting hard shots. They're not doing anything crazy. So, like, I shouldn't have lost. Um, but a lot of coaches, I feel like good coaches, in my opinion, will know to instruct their athlete that they can't they can't ever think that like if they've lost right if they lost against someone um you're not better than them like that's just right. you know you yeah. have to say that and i think it is a little different <laughs> you're still jabbing that um <laughs> help it oh, oh my god audio <laughs> jab please <laughs> um it is a little different because in a tennis match, you know, you're looking at a probably an hour minimum um, that you had to interact with this person um, to figure out what to do against them, right? In a lot of fighting game competitions, a good tournament I wish. round I wish. would probably be about <laughs> 15 minutes at most if you had a longer type of set. And some of them end in five minutes, right? Seven minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see some of the YouTube videos if you, if you get too old or something it can happen really quickly and it can happen you know frankly off some bullshit right so right. you can really acknowledge that you know you might be a better player than someone and have it be more accurate in a fighting game situation um but at the same time you also said something that's really good is that I, I, if you always disagree a little bit um oh, really? i think uh, specifically with the way Tekken works, because mm -hmm. I don't know much about other fighting games, mm -hmm. I think that you can give yourself excuses as to why you lost. Like, oh, I didn't know the matchup, or like, uh, that person just used this one move, or like, things like that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there was a weird sidewall splat and it made me drop the game winning combo. Yeah? Yeah. Um, but it's like, if it was that close to begin with, you mm -hmm. weren't the, the like, better player. At best, you were tied, and one of you has to win. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's like people can fool themselves. Oh, they, they can. And, okay, I uh, thought you were saying, in, like, in that way. they should yeah. give themselves that excuse. No, 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 no. Right, okay, yeah, I um, agree. I, I, The only, ex like, and I'm, you know, of course guilty of this because I'm a person, but... Um, <laughs> sure. I don't actually mean it. It's more of like me venting whenever I make those excuses of like, dang, I, I lost, but I don't yeah. want to like confront it just yet. So I'm going to like blame Heihachi's like Omen Thunder Godfist or whatever it's called, you know? Uh-huh. Whenever he, in reality, he just beat me up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Um, or like this guy keeps grabbing me. Yeah, Look how whoever. good I am. I can tech the throw uh, <laughs> but on the can't. ground, but I, I can't break the throw when he grabs me. Like, come on. I'm so sick. But he double hop kicks, though. Jesus. <laughs> Taking it from my playbook, man. That was not what I wanted. Ah! I didn't think you'd do it a, a third time. I was going to, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I had to. So, um, <laughs> shit. So, what were we talking about? You remember? Uh, it was attitude on losing, having a bad attitude about losing. Okay, so. Hey, it beat it. Oh my god. Yeah, I delayed it a little bit. What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the little tea bag? No, yeah. I was trying to I was trying to sidestep. <laughs> okay. Um What's it called? The Oh, no, but something else... You... You're saying people had really bad attitudes about losing. Well, be but then before that, th something else you really... You said that I really liked was that, like, no matter what, you're just looking to 
improve. You did put a qualification on it. Is like if you're in a tournament match, like um, that's not the case, right? So it's like separating: are you practicing or are you playing? You know, because I feel like yeah. people give themselves they they come in with the attitude of like, oh well, you know, I'm still getting better. So it's like, why are you competing then? You know, like like if you're competing. So I keep branching off, right? But basically, like, you have to practice competing as much as you have to practice whatever you're playing, you know? You can't just spend your whole life in practice mode and then go to a tournament and then um, be good. Because then you go back to what Speak we talked yourself, about. Speak dude. Because then you go back to what we talked about earlier. You get nervous and you get a round-ending combo, wall combo, and you don't finish it on Kid <laughs> Mercer. Or you drop your Rage Art at the end. Anyways, you're going to talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So, you, so people will find very... Oh, come on. Damn it. <laughs> uh, very often that, you know, you have to practice competing as much as you have to practice... Oh, shit. Yes. I hate myself. Stole it. Look at that. <laughs> Thanks for showing my point. I appreciate the, uh, the visual aid. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you have to practice competing as much as you practice any skill and any any uh, thing that you're doing. Dang. Dang. How'd you know? I could have done a. Uh, you could have, but you didn't. I wonder why. Oh, oh my no! God, I tried oh to no! I saw it. <laughs> Anyway, go back to your losing <laughs> attitude talk. Yeah. So, um, what was I saying? Damn it! <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 you good. Uh, you were talking about how uh, I put a qualification on it, and how people that are like giving themselves the excuse of they're still getting better, and you said like, why are you competing then? Yeah, you, so you have to practice the way you would compete. Mm-hmm. Dang. <laughs> so. I mean, I get it, like, um, even if you're not, even if you are practicing, right? But there should be a really clear... Dang, 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 dang. There should be a really clear distinction between, like, your practice and your, like, I'm trying to win these matches. Um, so, so that you don't give yourself any type of cop-out like that to say, um... Like, oh, this, like, the reason I lost is because I wanted to, almost. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. It's like, yeah, I didn't come in here for victory. I came in here to, like, see if I could do certain things, you know? Um, then yeah. just shut up. Just shut up. We don't want to hear from you. You shouldn't want to hear from yourself. Like, take that information and go develop your game again so that you can have, like, actual results. Um, yeah. But you, so, what was it? You had qualified it with. Okay, so improving in general, if, right? If you're in a tournament, mm -hmm. you, your goal in the game should be to win. If you are anywhere else, your goal should be to improve. Exactly. Um, uh, when, one thing I wanted to add is that... Uh, dang, I think I forgot. Never mind. <laughs> I really... I think next time we should have, like, a notepad to, like, make notes in the middle of I it. I have one open in front oh of me. Oh, my God. Oh, it's you in came... the middle you came prepared and then oh yeah yeah see yeah. uh so we'll do that next time um but so yeah so then um i think you qualified it with like uh yeah i lost mine too but what i was gonna say was that we should probably go over footage next time have footage in the background that we can comment on while we talk yeah, rather than playing instead of playing yeah I really yeah. wanted to be able to do this, but it's just not panning out. It's hard, dude. It's really hard. We'll keep... I'm like trying to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll 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 mix it up. We'll do it like every so often. Sometimes we'll play and talk. Um, sometimes it'll be uh, just an overlay later on. Cause I have a yeah. lot of a lot of footage anyway, unused. So we could do that. Um, but yeah, so like if I'm playing a tournament and I can just tell like this person is way better than me 
Um, I feel like I have, I make the mistake of like, okay, I'm just going to learn. I'm going to like see what I can get out of this or how, you know, how well I can do kind of thing. But really, if I acknowledge it better than me, I should be trying to think, you know, how can I steal this win from them? Y yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Dude. Yep. And I don't do that Absolutely. enough. I mean, I do it against you all the time, but. What am I... What the... Right. And honestly, um, those are the only times that I beat you in tournament. Um, it's never, okay. The, the, the one time against Falcon Ram in February, that was like honest as fuck. I just counter hit the shit out of you. But every other time I've beaten you in like. Honest. <coughs> counter hitting honest. What? It's a you mechanic. Just toss out the, these moves for no reason. It's, it's a mechanic the in the hit, game. They went, yeah. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yup. <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> um, I was trying to, de to delay it a little bit. Uh, they gave me time yeah, to sidestep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't I do not do that enough, you know? Um, and, you know, honestly, it's a pride thing. I don't want to acknowledge that someone is better than me until I've actually lost to them. So I never think, like, I'm going to steal it. I just think, like, I haven't lost yet. So... I don't have to regard them as a higher uh, competitor, you know? Um, I do the same thing in tennis, unfortunately. Dang, nice. You can block the second hit. I know, I yeah. found that out a couple games ago, but I was already, I'd pushed okay. a button, so. Couldn't do it. Um, Yeah, I think um, people who get too attached to like their egos mm -hmm. uh, have a hard time dealing with losing yeah like for me if i lose uh like whenever i think who was it i think kyle beat me mm -hmm. sent me to losers bracket and i'm like yeah and me all right that sucks you know it feels bad mm -hmm. but uh you know i'm not gonna feel this way again not today at least. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh that's exactly what i thought like i the, the way I, like, pet myself up for those things is that I, I say, like, I've seen me win these, right? Yeah. I'm in loser's bracket. I've seen me win these. Like, even yesterday in Jacksonville, I, I'm like, I come from loser's bracket before. Yeah. And and in my head, I'm like, okay, so I reset versus King J uh, Jr., right? Or King Ray Jr. Uh-huh. And he seated second in this tournament. So yeah. I told myself, theoretically, I'm third place. Yeah. Material. And I've come from loser's bracket before, and that's how I dealt with it. Like, that guy beat me, and it sucked, and it felt bad. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to carry that loss into my next match. Um, and that's just part of having, like, mental strength. Yeah. Mental toughness. But then also, you know, I think it's worth mentioning that it comes from experience. Like, you have to have those wins to, to think that in the first place. Um, it's not something right. that you can just like fake it till you make it like, oh yeah, I think I can do this. It's like, I mean, of course think that you can't, oh, Jesus, of course think that you can do it or believe that you can, but don't, you know, rely on that if it's, if it hasn't happened yet, you know, I think a lot of people would run into that, um, mistake. There it is. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> you still there, bro? I was trying to break your ground throws. <laughs> I was trying, like, I'm going to break these. Oh, man. <laughs> Prideful. <laughs> Ah oh, man, come on. Whoops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be stubborn. <laughs> I was. I was stubborn um, enough. 
one thing that we can tie in real quick uh, mm -hmm. is expectations. Yeah. Oh no, we already talked about expectations. I well, had it twice. We did, okay. but um, um so, confident. Confidence was the next one. Confidence. So, like attitude and confidence. There, yeah. there, there's a difference there. Like mm -hmm. having a bad attitude is not the same as being confident, uh, and it's... or like being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just not the same. Having a bad attitude and having bad confidence are also different as well. Um, because a bad attitude will keep you from progress. Bad confidence will keep you from, like, uh, present results or, like, in the moment um, results, you know? So, like, I feel like if you have a bad attitude, it kind of surrounds your career as a competitor. But bad confidence... Um, I think it's the easiest thing to get rid of because someone can literally just beat it out of you. Um, and it's the, it's just not that useful um, to have. But what is it, right? So bad confidence. Bad confidence is really baseless more than anything. Um, and like the whole fake it till you make it, I don't think it's bad confidence. I think there's a, a fine line of difference there um, because fake it till you make it. Oh my god. Because uh, fake it, <laughs> <laughs> fake it till you make it. I think is bad confidence um, enveloped in good attitude, right? Um, so you're like hopeful about what you can do, um, and you're use you're you're coupling that with like you know okay I'll be able to do it. Um, but then uh, the reverse would be. The reverse would be, uh, oh my god, bro, where are my inputs? Ah! No! <laughs> nice. <laughs> so he has a team, damn it. Yeah. Um, it's 13 frames, too. Of course it is. Uh, so the reverse would be, like, uh, a bad attitude with bad confidence, which is, like, um, what you were talking about earlier, of that feeling of entitlement. When you like feel entitled to a win, that's when it gets a little iffy. You're not that guy, okay? You're not that guy, buddy. I'm that guy. <laughs> what are you doing? You're not that guy, buddy. <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, yeah, so, okay. So let's say that uh, you have no, like, real wins under your belt. How do you remain confident? Like, you said earlier that um, you were going to try to win or steal games from me. Um, and that you should have that same, uh, like, mentality when playing against other people. And I absolutely agree. I think that that is the mark of a fantastic tournament player. Mm -hmm. Having enough, like, having the mindset and the confidence to look at a player and admit that they are, like, stronger fundamentally and that most people would say that they would win over you. Mm -hmm. And thinking about how you're going to win instead. How are you going to steal this win from them? Um, like, that is a really big part of just confidence in general. And I really like that that kind of attitude. Wow. <laughs> Why do I always do that? Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Every single time. <laughs> uh, I think that's a big part of confidence. And um, so if you don't have the experience that you need to mm. win, uh, if you don't have the experience you need to win every time, <clears throat> Like yeah. a first to 10 versus this guy, right? Mm -hmm. You can at least think about uh, how you're going to, one, make them work for it, or mm -hmm. two, try to steal it from them. Mm -hmm. um, like, one way or another, this is getting clipped. You know? Like this match. Right, exactly. Right? They're, they're going to body me yep. and do something amazing, uh -huh. or I'm going to beat them. Yeah. <laughs> like, just trying to give them as hard of a time as possible yeah. to the point of trolling them. Right? Yeah, because you're trying to win exactly. So, and if you can't win in the game, right, you might just need to spam throws 
something like that. Something that they find really annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. And just make them have a bad time. Uh, and that's a, that's a part of confidence that I think uh, people don't really understand typically. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's like, it's, it's pretty much the topic of today is like the meta outside of it. You know, playing with confidence, I think it has a lot to do with, dang, <laughs> with um, all, all those things that surround it, you know? And it's not just about being confident just because you think you're going to win or you think you're going to be the better player. It's like, um, you know, are you going to be able to control you know, the factors of the match on top right. of it. Not just the game itself, but the game surrounding the game. Now, I just now understand your definition of metagame. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh. Round three. Fight. Um, so I think you can't. I think you can't really have any, like, useful confidence without results like that. Jeez, what the heck? You're a magician, man. I think you can. I think that, um, it, let's say that, well, actually, you're right. I was just about <laughs> to say, like, <laughs> I can, uh -huh. right? But it's because I have experience. as much experience as I do. <laughs> exactly. Right? If I had zero experience, you know, this wouldn't be, like, something that I would be thinking about. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think you're absolutely right. And yeah, it's exactly how I feel. Um, Cause I think we can really talk about like where we could pull confidence from, but it, it's because of, we, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that in the beginning. Um, and maybe we've forgotten what it feels like by now to come from that direction. Um, but I think that that's the truth, you know, is that you have to have something to kind of fill your, your confidence in with. You know, no matter what, even and again, even if it's a fake it till you make it situation, the fact that you've like you've earned the right to do that because you know how to have a, a healthy attitude towards your confidence. You know, even if the confidence itself is bad or baseless, as I would say, if you've earned the right, you've earned the right to use a, a baseless confidence. If you've you know figured out how to have a good attitude surrounding it, which you most people are not going to be able to learn outside of competing they're gonna have to compete they're gonna have to get their ass handed to them on a platter with t with tabasco and you know learn how to to deal with that and come away from that situation right um and overall how important do you think confidence is like other than uh let's say that the two baselines is that you have like anakin who uh is like a very like he thrives on confidence he mm -hmm. has to be confident or else he's not going to perform well mm -hmm. whereas you have players like jdcr who are just like yeah i'll do my best and you know he's like so good that he doesn't really need that like uh it's a different type of confidence, I think. It's like a more quiet confidence mm -hmm. uh, from JDCR. Yeah. Whereas with Anakin, he has to like convince himself. Right. You know. Um. Well, and I don't know what's going on in Anakin's head. I I just know that uh, you know, sometimes he'll snarl or whatever, and he's like being kind of showy. And yeah. I think that's a, mm -hmm. a method that he has to deal with nervousness. I. If I had to guess. Yeah. It could just be who he is. I honestly think JDCR is lying to you. Yeah? Yep. I feel like the way that that guy practices, the way that that guy puts, you know, so much that he does into that game, um, it's not... I think it's a different culture's confidence is, is another thing, too. Um, like, I think that we... It's easier for us to identify um, kind of like a Western kind of confidence in like it being ostentatious a little showy and whatnot but i really think that there is another type of confidence um that jdcr exhibits oof ow <laughs> my 20 win streak yeah sorry about that buddy 
um, <laughs> is uh, is still there because even though he says like I'll do my best, I feel like that's a confident statement because he's saying he will he's he's confident he'll do his best. Like I think that's confidence in itself. You know, I feel like a lack of confidence. Someone yeah. might not feel like they're gonna do their best. You know, and I feel like JDCR. That's a subtle way of saying, you know, I'm gonna win because that is what he equates. If he's playing his best, he's gonna win. So it's like him saying the same thing. You know, what is I mean? he though? I th- that's my opinion. In my opinion, uh, I, I think I so. I think he played his best versus Arslan, and he lost. Did he re- did he regard so, that like, as his best play? Um, he was playing phenomenally, like throughout mm-hmm. that entire tournament, mm-hmm. and it felt like he was playing as good as he's played in a very long time. Yeah, he did mention that he wasn't really practicing before the tournament, mm-hmm. uh, and that he had to swap to Dragonov because he had only played Fakumram online, and he didn't, uh, he couldn't adapt to the offline environment with that character right so he played dragonov who he has the most experience with Mm -hmm. um and he was like he was tearing through basically everyone yeah and then he plays against arslan and it just felt like uh arslan's movement shut him down like he couldn't like i was watching and i'm just like mm -hmm. it it really felt like arslan locked him out of the game and jdcr was trying his best to adapt and like yeah uh and and play you know well, I feel like I would be hard pressed to believe that. I'm gonna relaunch. Okay. Uh, I would. I'd be hard pressed to believe that. Um, he would. Re- he would say that that was his best. You know, especially because his game plan has a lot to do with that. You know, Batman style, like early preparation, ahead of time. I mean, he might not even care about how he plays like off rip because he puts so much into his beforehand like even when he does play off rip or he plays like reactionary because it's like someone who's never played before he from what i've heard from his streams and his youtube videos he relies heavily on you know what he's put into the game beforehand uh, like before that so then if he's like really trying to dive into falcon rom and then suddenly switches in tournament and acknowledges like you know oh i have more to do i could see him thinking about that while he's playing and then kind of like leaning back on it you know um, I'd be interested to know what he said about his uh, his gameplay. Um, yeah, in his um, loss. I can't remember exactly what it was. I actually uh, disagree a bit with uh, the whole Batman thing. <coughs> yeah, JDCR doesn't even like put as much emphasis on frame data mm-hmm. as other players. Like um, he just sort of he, like the way he plays makes it really hard to believe that he's not like studying for Mm -hmm. these situations but like in his stream and everything he really uh does just like play for fun Mm -hmm. if that makes sense like okay that's all it is and he's just phenomenal at the game and he's put so much time into it that Mm -hmm. his experience is able to win him matches i got you and like his, his like his uh, reads on making sidesteps work and like his option select based movement mm-hmm. is is really what carries him in a way that other players aren't really able to achieve. I think even Arslan, or was it Bilal? Someone said that JDCR was the best uh, at sidestepping in the game. Like, there's no one better than him at making sidesteps. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was. It, uh, Specifically, a Pakistani player, because I know that Korean players have always said that. Yeah. Um, that leads into our next topic pretty well, though, uh, which is preparation. Um, Again. Preparing for a tournament beforehand. Again. No, no, no. Uh. In terms of characters and uh. stuff like that, not like health. Yeah. Like, um, let's say you have a list of players that you know will be in your pool, right? Um, RIP Secret Garden for me, at least. Um, and you're trying to prepare. That's one way to uh, increase your odds of winning a tournament before you even sit down and play. Mm hmm. 
what what are some of the things that you would look towards like what what is useful information and not very useful information with the assumption that the opponent is going to catch on at some point dang well oh that's a good question so like if if, if i Go through this match and like I've studied you for like three years or something, and now we play. Like I can assume that at some point you're going to realize if you're a good tournament player that like I understand your like rhythm and flow charts, mm -hmm. and you're just going to change it, right? Yeah. Um, I do think it is really important. I think it's it's the fact that you're getting someone to change their game plan is huge. Like, no matter what, whether they, they they see that or not, once you get them to do that different stuff, they're already going to be a little, you know, thanks. They're already going to be a little, um, you know, off of it. And that means that you've accomplished something. And I think that's important. If, if it's to the point where you have to study someone or you felt like you needed to, um, I know, like, just coming off of the topic of confidence, right? Um, if you yeah. feel like you needed to, then just by getting them to change something like that is, uh, is huge. Uh, you said, like, feeling like you need to prepare for somebody? Yeah. Because, uh, if you're, if you're, um... If you're confident, because, like, why I said, like, you know, going back to how we, what we were saying is, like, if, um, oh, even talking about being nervous, right? It's, like, if you're not nervous because you feel like you're going to win, um, not necessarily that that's the best thing to do, as we acknowledge, but if you don't feel like you need to really study anyone you're about to play, I, al I also think that you might be taking on too much information if you do that. You might be locking yourself into data collection um, like preliminarily rather than relying on your ability to um, see what's going on that day, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And especially like I, more thinking of it from a tennis standpoint, but I think it still applies to fighting games is the idea that like, you know, what kind of data are you getting on them? Are you watching them play a practice game? Are you watching them mess around on stream? Are you watching them in another tournament? Like what does this tournament mean to them? relative to that tournament you're watching them in um like how the the same way we acknowledge that you have to practice for the situation that you're going to be in um you also have to think that your opponent is playing um you know with a different mentality for different right uh yeah for different um, um situations so real quick, I'll just explain the way preparation works in chess. Mm -hmm. Is um, you take a look at their preferred style. Uh, you look at how their wins come about, like the level of players that they're playing against and how they're winning, right? Mm -hmm. And you get a large enough sample that um, you're not like susceptible to your data being an, an anomaly, right? Yeah. And with all preparation, you have to uh, you have to be okay with the fact that you could get there and they could have a completely different opening, right? Yeah. Planned for you. <laughs> yeah. Like anti-preparation strats. And yeah. That's okay. That's like yeah, you're not going to lose because of that, right? Uh, or at least you shouldn't if uh, you were preparing correctly. And in fighting games, I think it's the same thing. If I was the best player in the world, and I'm playing against people that I've beaten like thousands of times, I would still prepare for them before a tournament. Like, I would still give them respect, like, as players. Just because uh, now my win is, like, uh, more important. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to defend it. Right. You know? That makes... I feel like mm -hmm. uh, high-level players that aren't preparing for opponents yeah. are just robbing themselves of something that could be helping them. Mm. 
And there is going overboard. Not every detail in a match matters because you don't know what's going through that player's head. Right. So you have to look at very general patterns mm -hmm. and um and and yeah, you're just looking for patterns essentially. Right. Um patterns over a large set of data. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing you'll need to know. If there was one match where this dude just wasn't breaking throws, that doesn't mean he can't break throws if in every other match he's breaking them instantly. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I think that's what I was commenting on is the um is that like if if they do take it overboard then they would definitely want to avoid that. But I think um what you pointed out is uh is super important is the fact that like I agree that it's it's better to have um it's better to have something to verify if it's gonna be uh, if it's gonna apply to that day than to like start fresh, right? So if you're looking at someone and you're seeing a pattern and then you're able to discern, hey, is that a pattern that they're using today or not? Versus just to go off of, you know, nothing and then say, oh, what do they like to do? You know, you'll be a little bit ahead of the game but then you won't be locked in because you'll still be wanting to verify first, you know? Um, but you'll be verifying from information rather than uh, from zero. So it's almost like giving yourself yeah. some momentum before the match even starts. Was that like all you wanted to say in preparation? No, <laughs> I'm trying to win. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I see. Darn, my back dash. <laughs> it's tip range. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back to that. Hold on. <laughs> but yeah, preparation is, I think, is really important. Uh, Specifically for strategies and things like that. Ah, my wits. Um, like really general stuff, general directions. Yeah. That can, uh, I didn't mean to return the lobby. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, general directions that can a uh, guide your gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, because I think if you're playing unstructured, you're playing <coughs> bad or bad. Yeah, know? that's Regardless true. Regardless of what your results are. And it should it should stay right there. It should stay right there. Like you shouldn't be looking for like, you know, specific scenarios trying to figure out what this person does at every single interaction. It should just be like, you know, overall. Well, you should like, you you should look at uh, whenever this person goes for down forward one. Mm -hmm. uh, create a little table and make a list of all of the stuff he does uh, in the first round mm -hmm. of uh, his tournament sets. Like. Yeah. No, um, I would regard that as you're general. You're look for a pattern, mm -hmm. and then like uh, that, that's the first round of each different match. So right. you're not looking at the second round mm -hmm. or anything like that, because you don't want uh, the data that he's gotten on his opponent to tamper with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you go through and you look at like second round or whatever, and how does it change? Like, like that. That's what I was doing to um, uh, whack dash. Um, like I saw that he really likes to go for Harrier one mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, what do I do about Harrier one? Because he's most likely going to do that. Yeah. And if I can steal a round or two, 
just based on reading that, then fine. Well, so um, I would regard that as gen good. I would regard that as general, like especially something like a down forward one, like if it's a you know a good um, tool for their character or something that they do quite often. I literally meant something ridiculous, specific, like you know. What uh, what wall combo do they like to do in case they whiff it? So I'll know how to punish it, right? You're trying to like have uh, data yeah. out the ass, um, to really like get one up on on someone. But like something That's like, sick. what strings do they finish? You know, um, like look into that, you know, and win. Like, do they? like to go for this counter hitting string at the wall um you know so that you 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 know you have that i that information ahead of time so that the first time you go to the wall you don't have to fuck around and find out you know you literally already have an idea right um i think it's important i think that's important um so you can see like kind of how ridiculous i was thinking uh, when I'm saying that, like, it's not necessary to prepare. Oh, jeez. Ah. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that, that it, it's good to come not from zero with your preparation. And I think it's important, especially um, in a game where, you know, you have different characters and um you know the way that you play that matchup if you're not wasting time losing to, to you know certain things you know it could uh be the difference between that final round and you've already won right Wow, okay. This guy. What? Oh my god. Um, yeah, I mean. <sighs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, the next few topics are getting into, like, uh, on on site. Like, you're, you're at the tournament venue. Yeah. Right? And it's, like, metagames, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing is, like, speed lapping. Like, cram, cram lapping. So, like, let's say you get there... And then you see one of the guys that's in your pool, and then he plays a character that you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. So you hop on a setup and you start to lap. Mm. Like, do you think that's worth it? Like, mm. I guess it depends on how much experience you have versus the character. Yeah. But let's say that you've played against a few, but none of them have been super good, right? Yeah. And this guy seems like a character specialist. Hmm. So. Uh... I think that's a. I think that has to be answered case by case. Honestly, uh, I think that's a very specific like situation you find yourself in. Um, some characters in some games, even if it's a character specialist, it's like such a generic character that it, it won't be. It won't make as much of a difference. Um, it's like as long as you're good at the game, you'll be fine. You won't really get anything extra from cramming. Some of them, it's like right. You know, if if this is their pool character. You probably want to find out why it's a pool character um, for them. You know, like, what do a lot of people fall for that makes them think I should play this character in these early rounds? And then make sure make sure it's not you, <laughs> you know? Um, right. But I think at that point, honestly, you have a decision to make. Are you going to just decide to learn? Or, are you, you know, um, are you really going to try to win this match here? Because you can regard it as this is my practice against this character now, 
because I'm getting that practice in tournament. Um, and then I'll just, you know, be a little bit more comfortable or prepared for the next tournament, for example. Yeah. Um, or if you really want to win, I would cram. I would definitely cram. And I don't think it's going to take away from anything that you are going to do. Um, because you're already, you're, already, you're already in that situation where you're having to decide. Um, you, that means that, again, the, the confidence might not be there. What the fuck? Go low, damn it. The... <laughs> <laughs> no. So yesterday, I crammed uh, for that uh, Heihachi. Uh-huh. Right? Uh, because I didn't know if Bakum Ram could uh, step his uh, electric. Yeah. Um, he can, by the way. I wanted to know whether Pokemon could step electric and down forward one. And yeah. He can. I think that's worth it to know. Wait, um, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to be right back. And then he right? hit me with the, the like, omen god fist or whatever. <laughs> Wait, hold on, bro. I'll be right back. Like, 10 uh, seconds. Okay. Yep. But yeah, the the Heihachi. Uh, let me look that up real quick. Actually, like <laughs> at the beginning of the round, he hit it, blue sparked, like, and I just kind of exploded, to be honest. Okay, what? It's minus ten. I was talking about the the Heihachi thing. It crushes on frame six. It's minus ten. Does 35 damage and launches. Oh. Gross. Yeah. So, how do you... Um, how do you feel about having... Well, part of it, it is that I was so focused on uh, those moves, and then he never used them. Oh. Uh, he honestly might have seen me labbing the character beforehand, because he picked Fakumra. He mirror matched me at first. Yeah. And then he wasn't sure about going to Heihachi. Yeah, because he almost won <laughs> with Fakum, bro. Well, no, I was perfectly fine with him picking Fakum, Mhm. Mm I thought you would be. Then you almost lost, like that's all I'm saying. Well, I didn't really, because, like... What, what he did was, um, he tested me with throws. Right. Because every time I broke the throw, he nodded. He was, mm -hmm. like, right next to me. He nodded every time I broke it. And then whenever I didn't break it, he'd, like, tilt his head a little bit. Right? Yeah. And he was just seeing if I could break throws. And um, I was fine with getting thrown because if he was going to pick that character again that's, like, not his main mm -hmm. and then, like, try to just win by throwing me, he's going to have to figure out a new plan. So that's why I was happy. And then he picked Heihachi, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, yeah. this isn't like horrible because I lab the character and mm. I, I have experience versus Heihachi. Like there was a really good uh, like Mishima player. Like mm -hmm. the kid must have been like 12 years old, but like his wave dash and like electrics and everything, his his execution was like insane. Right? Yeah. Um, and he was good in neutral too. So I, I played a bunch of matches versus him and uh, I actually won a first to five. Um, because we were doing like first to fives on the uh, casual setups, and then we would, um, the loser would get off. And I was there for a while, like, because I kept winning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like definitely a case by case basis. I think you're right about that. Mm hmm. And even, like, look at how, you know, you lab the character, but then it wasn't even the moves that he uses. Like, I think the scenario you brought up was if you're seeing somebody play that character, then, like, I think it's more useful than labbing the character generically, you know? Um, but yeah. then it's not completely useless because, you know, you'll be able to acknowledge what a character's good moves are 
and then why are the why are those moves that character's good moves um it's probably the main thing that you'd have to deal with because maybe the bad moves like you're not gonna have problems with you know yeah um so i think the situation you brought up uh go ahead and lab um the situation you're in is probably the right decision that you lab and it would be very rare um not to go ahead and spend that time you know getting some information and putting yourself in the right mindset it is kind of like a, a cop-out answer of it depends because it also depends on the type of player you are like if you're gonna sit there and read all that and then you're not gonna use it like focus on your game focus on what you're gonna do read yeah or i i wasn't in frame data or anything no no, no. I, I went into practice mode yeah. I recorded him jabbing and then electric, jab and then down forward one. And then I, I practiced you. stepping it. And then I practiced reacting to down back two from Hey Hachi. Yeah. And I still got hit by every single one of them. Look, um, man, in okay. the match because it's different. Listen, yeah. you already know everyone's best move. I would have to read up on that shit. That's all I'm saying. All right. I see. Make yeah, me expose yeah, myself. <laughs> I've already done like the majority of my labbing. Uh -huh. I got it at, I got it away. I got it out of the way. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I meant by reading. God. Okay, I don't even know where I was at on that one. That was crazy. Um, Neither do I. <laughs> Dang. I'm insane. <laughs> um. But yeah, so I think it is worth it for sure. That's a mid, by the way. Yeah, I was trying to step it. <laughs> you have to step it to the other direction. I don't ever step that way. You lied to me. I lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> um, I think that's enough for that one. Uh, yeah. The next one is kind of uh, related. It's networking. Like, while you're at a match or like a tournament, right? One of the most important things you can do is like meet and talk to people. Mm -hmm. Because why are you there otherwise? You can't improve on your own. So why are you there? And I think having a nice time at these kind of tournaments is a, a very easy way to calm your nerves. And like to be okay with the results of it. I can tell you that for sure, whenever it's just me by myself and I don't really have anyone to talk to, mm -hmm. I get more uh, upset about my losses, right? Yeah. Because I have like no one to share that with. Right, exactly. Um, and I just have to kind of sit there, mm -hmm. right? Um, and while it might not uh, improve your chances of winning, by too much in the tournament that you're currently at, mm -hmm. I think your future tournaments, it'll like be a, a huge boon. So let's say that I went to uh, Atlanta, right? Yeah. And I went 0 and 2, but I spent a large part of my time meeting the people there, mm -hmm. talking to them, chilling with them. Okay. The next time I go to Atlanta, I now know people. Right. And that's like a huge uh, bonus, mm -hmm. I think. What do you think about that? Yeah, 100%. Like, it really boils down to if you're in a room where you've just beaten everybody, like, in a competitive setting, leave. Like, get out of there. Like, what are you doing there? All right? If you're in a room where you've just lost to people, those are the people you definitely want to talk to and be talking to, like, a lot, you know? Um, and I, I like the, the notion of, like, sharing your loss because it's not even necessarily or specifically about sharing the loss. It's even... The conversation about you know what might have led to it um, that you can get from <laughs> God fuck you man <laughs> that you can get from uh... uh oh am I dead yeah oh nope. whoops I missed input my guaranteed follow up. <laughs> What? 
Oh, he sidestepped. That was a good sidestep. He wanted it again. This guy. Um, so, for sure, like, that's what you should be doing. Um, it's networking. And it's even exactly how you said, like, why are you there um, otherwise? Um, right. You get a lot out of it, you know? Um, any competition, it's better to... to be plugged into the community that you're competing with or against. Why did that not go through? Um, yeah. You said that, like, if you've beaten everyone in that room, you should leave. Uh, I don't necessarily agree. I think that if you're just going to, like, be there to sort of take from the community, mm -hmm. um, then people won't really want to be around you. Right. If you're just there to take advice and not to give advice to maybe less experienced players than yourself, mm -hmm. then, you know, why should anyone talk to you? Well, no. Right? So, yeah, I, um, I get that point. Um, but what I mean is like, um, like even taking advice, right? You wouldn't even be doing that. But it's kind of like you just beat everyone there. And if we're talking about net networking or not, it's a, to me, it seems like it's assuming like you don't know everyone there. Um, you don't, you won't really know the, um, the atmosphere around it. Right. So if you win, you beat everyone and then you're just there, like giving advice out unsolicited, um, that could cause some issues, you know, maybe some people, they're not ready at that moment to hear about, you know, why they lost or what led Look, to it. They would have to go pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. If somebody's mad, you know, you, Hey, um, we're talking about like gamers. The way they're looking around. They don't really want to We're talking about gamers. They don't want to talk to people. Like you can read body. Language. We're talking. I can, I all the time. you can, we're talking about gamers in general, sir. So what I'm saying, my point is oh, let see. them come to you, you know, as, as I'm saying, I don't, I don't mean leave, like, you know, get your winnings and then like, you know, put the peace sign up and then just literally disappear. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, like, you know, let them, let them interact with you and let them like kind of, express that interest in you know wanting the growth um but as far as for your like from your own direction like for yourself jeez um just answering the question um from a like oh my god you're toxic from a for yourself standpoint um networking uh a scene um, with like less skill than you. Well, that's my rage art. Oh my god. Okay. Round two. Networking a scene. Um. <laughs> was that what you were trying to do? <laughs> no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was reading chat. <laughs> I actually didn't even realize I was running forward. Uh, I was back. I, I thought I was back that shit. Um. <laughs> sorry, Rogue has been here since we were talking about energy drinks. <laughs> In chat. Um. Oh, I see. Bro, if you have anything you want to ask or want us to talk about, you can uh, say it in chat too. Um, and I'll we'll make it a topic as well. But uh, thanks for sticking out with us. By rage? Oh, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, so I think that networking from a, like for yourself when you're in a <laughs> when you're in a um, situation of like lesser skill than you, like it has to be done with a certain amount of tact. You really have to let people come to you um, to the point where like I wouldn't go out of my way and do it. But it also depends on how you were invited, you know? Did they know that you were going to come in and beat everyone and that's why they wanted you there? Like, they've already acknowledged that they're looking for something from you. Then go ahead and meet them um, at least halfway, you know? But if you kind of yeah. just showed up and then you just, like, you know, I don't know. It depends. There's certain nuances to a lot of those things. What? Okay. I had to make sure. I guess... Some people like aren't also aren't very good at taking advice. Um, yeah. 
Like, oh, for me, uh, whenever I ask for advice, I'm fully aware that the opponent, I mean, not the opponent, the person mm -hmm. <laughs> giving me advice. Yeah. <laughs> everyone is my enemy. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> That's funny. Um, could, could just be wrong, or it could be bad advice. Right. right. So, no matter who I'm talking to, even if it's like King Ray or King Ray Jr. or whatever, yeah. I'm taking into account what they're saying, mm -hmm. and I'm like trusting their word. But I'm also thinking about it for myself. Yeah. I'm not going to just blindly follow it. I'm going to be like, okay, um, I'm going to save this. Like, okay, so stuff that makes sense, I'm going to try to implement immediately. Mm -hmm. Stuff that doesn't make sense, I'm going to, like, toy around with. I'll mess with it. Uh, and I'll, I'll sort of just save it in the bank for whenever more context becomes available. And it, like, might make more sense later down the road. And um, and some advice is just bad advice, you know. And I think it's pretty obvious when it is. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of your job as like a competitor to be able to distinguish between good and bad advice. Yeah, that's true. Oh dang, <laughs> man! That that move as Oki is so strong so if you really if you really believe that then my question to you is um, how do you feel about advice from a weaker player than yourself I think that's also valuable Okay, I, I agree. Um, I think if you're not willing to listen to players that might not be as good as you, then you're just completely ignoring the fact that uh, in like boxing or uh, other sports, the coaches are rarely as good as the players. Exactly. Uh huh. Like you, I forget the name of Muhammad Ali's coach or like Joe Frazier's coach, but they were like both some of the best coaches in like of all time right right and you can't tell me for a second that they're better at boxing than <laughs> joe or muhammad yeah right? even in their prime i disagree because that's not the way progress works exactly um so like just having this idea of like this person's worse at the game therefore their opinions don't actually matter is pretty stupid Wow, I was I was robbed. Yeah, I actually um, miss input. It's super ignorant uh, to think like that. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. And even I didn't even think about the coaching aspect because that's a good point. Like, people can be better at, at teaching and 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 compartmentalizing and explaining aspects of the game, even if they they can't execute it themselves for whatever reason. But I was thinking literally, even someone who can't beat you or can't find the tools to win against you but you know they still have eyes they still play the game they still have a different perspective that they can offer you and you as a better player can absorb mm -hmm. that and turn that into something you know even better than you yourself like you and a weaker player's perspective together can create a better um view of your own game than you can see just from you know from yourself inside out yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm good now. All right. Um, uh, so I, I think we've sort of gotten through that one um, pretty, pretty okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is like warm up, like uh, warming up, and this one is a little bit like different compared to the other ones. Yeah. But it's like one. Uh, I guess we can start with the importance of warming up, like. And obviously, any Mishima player understands this. Just naturally right mm -hmm. because of wave dash. the stuff their character like makes them do yeah the electrics and the 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the importance of warming up, like, uh, I think you can't even really fully put it into words. Like, you, you, you can't get away with not warming up. Even if you play a simple character, um, you should still make sure... Especially because, you know, we're, we're talking about all these things, like, we started with health, then we went into attitude, mental state, like, you gotta check where you're at, you know? No matter how easy your character is, how much you practice, no matter what you do, find out what's going on that day, like, play games ahead of time, so, even, you know, if it's important to prepare for an opponent, it's important to prepare yourself, or prepare for yourself, and see, um, right. you know what you've got going on that day <coughs> excuse and it, me it's not well. just warming up your hands it's warming up your mind as well literally yeah like Um, oops. What? I was jabbing you! I was jabbing! It's buffered. It's the buffered me. input. Oh my god. Oh, what? <laughs> Why? Why? Oh. Ah. <laughs> But it, it's like, uh, so understanding the importance is one thing, but how do you actually do it, right? Should you play matches? Like, are you just going to be in practice mode? Um, do you need the game to be on in order to warm up? Like, mm, that's a really good question. I have my own opinions about all that. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to hear yours first. So I think you'll probably hear me say this as long as we do these podcasts um it depends right i really think it's the type of player that every like you should know if you're a competitive player you should know how you warm up the best for yourself and that's what you should spend time to figure it out to figure out warm up a bunch of different ways and see you know what gives you the best feeling not even necessarily the best result because there's so many other things that go other factors that go into the result at the end of it but really see what gives you the best feeling going into it and puts you in the best state going into it and then replicate that. I mean, this is kind of a bias I have as a tennis player, but we are really big on routines. Um, even like before every serve, we'll have a certain routine. Before every point we play, there's 20 seconds that you're legally allowed um, between points before you have to start uh, make a motion to start the next point, right? That's how it's written in the rule books. Um, a lot of players they use that full the full extent of that time to kind of reset themselves. Oh shit. Uh and it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Dang. Yeah. Um it's a yeah. Um I'll say one thing. Mm -hmm. Uh Inga. Um yeah, so it's it's a big deal. And it really differs per player. Like not everyone does the same thing. There's not a there's not any documentation that says every tennis player this is the best way to warm up for a tennis match, or every fighting game player. Wow, the one time it loses. Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Harmony's microphone so I can like whisper into uh -huh. it. Dang. You can tech roll that, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, the uh, the health bar mm -hmm. doesn't show it, but that's not a true combo. If oh, you tech roll man. right, you can escape that forward three. This game sucks, bro. And I'm quoting, I'm I'm quoting MYK. I don't know if it's true, but you can try it. I got you. I'll try it. So if if you fail, then it's not my fault. 
Um, um, but yeah, so I was going to say, oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, that I kind of disagree with you a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Tekken, at least. Mm -hmm. I think that your job as a player is to, uh, look for the best you can get. Like, there's like a, a tier list of like warm up. Um, I guess I have to restart the game again. There's okay. like a tier list in my head of like warm up techniques. Mm -hmm. um, the best being uh, playing matches against players uh, any of any level, but you're going to pick a character that you uh, don't really play in tournament. You're going to pick a character that's hard, mm -hmm. um, that you have to like have warm hands for, mm -hmm. and you're not even going to focus on winning your matches you're going to focus on warming up your hands yeah so what i do is i pick jen or, or a character similar to jen mm -hmm. and the first thing i do is try to warm up my wave dash i don't play wave dash characters in tournament yeah um usually and like then it's like electrics and then like i move on to a little bit of neutral and decision making but i i try my best to stay away from a lot of the game plan stuff or strategy mm -hmm. because i don't want to like make too many decisions before the tournament starts okay. like that's one thing is that we have a certain number of decisions that we can make in a day mm -hmm. that are like good decisions a certain number of good decisions that can be made yeah. by a human um and everyone's number is different but it is there so you want to limit the amount of decisions you're making uh, for that tournament day mm -hmm. and when you're warming up you want a character that you really don't care about winning and you're just going to try to do hard stuff with your hands mm. if you can't get a player then i think practice mode is the next best thing yeah and if you can't get a setup i think just uh using your controller without a setup like mm -hmm. yesterday i got my stick out uh my arcade stick and I just like did wave dash motions with yeah. my hand, like while just sitting down. Mm -hmm. Like I was back dashing, I was like moving, sidestepping, um, and I did a few combos, and you know that's how I warmed up. And it wasn't enough, but it was better than nothing, I think. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, Dan, how's that gonna help me? you uh-huh for Deep. example what yeah just play steve play steve as bro. your warm-up character oh my god yeah. okay all right all right good point good point good point well no, no, no. if you're the type of player who if you switch characters um and you're playing steve for a little bit and then you go to pay, play King, and you're still doing Steve moves. Do not do that. All right? <laughs> if you have a hard time switching between characters, don't, don't. Um, because some people have that kind of issue. Yeah. I only have that whenever I'm switching between like four and five different characters in a single evening. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty good at playing multiple characters generally. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, pay attention to like stuff like that because if. If it's not working for you, it's not working for you. And yeah. you don't really need to force it to. No, that makes sense. Um, I mean, I don't know. Um, I've never like, yeah, warmed up with another say... character. So I wouldn't know if, uh, if it would mess me up or not. But honestly, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like... It also, it also prevents you from giving away data. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I struggle with that a lot. Um, so it's like a form of sandbagging. Yeah. And sandbagging is, like, is another thing we can get into. Uh, it might be its own topic, but I think sandbagging is really valuable mm -hmm. depending on the situation. How do you mean? Um, like, if you're trying to win mm. and you're like a serious competitor, you should sandbag. Yeah. 100%. And I don't mean sandbag by like you know, doing this, uh, well, well, noobs won't sidestep, but, like, just doing this. Ah. Yeah, 
I guess it worked. But, um. <laughs> I was trying to step, bro. I got stuck in the lava. But yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, like, uh, not it's 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 a form of sandbagging. It's not as like toxic as some sandbagging is, but yeah, it's like uh, saving your data, you know? Right. Yeah, I I struggle to do that because um, when I practice, like when I warm up with my only character that I have. I want to make sure like my good stuff to do is in my hands that day. So I'll go ahead and like try to make sure that I can do like certain things. But um, before when I wasn't really thinking about mixing up the timing of anything, um, I would have to just do what I would normally do in order to make sure that it was there. But then within doing that, people mm -hmm. would see it, you know, ahead of time and then, you know, have some kind of response towards it. So I well, probably you should be practicing it enough that it doesn't really matter. And you should build on the skill where you accept that you're just not able to do something in a certain match. So, uh, whenever I am like playing seriously with a character, and mm -hmm. like let's say Dragonov, and I keep messing up uh, instant wall running too, I stop using the move. I'll use it from a different distance. I just I won't keep attempting um, instant wall running too. Yeah. And. It's like you you need to be aware of what you can and can't do on the day because every day is different. You're not going to perform the same way every time. Mm -hmm. You could hear me react to that move. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's about all I wanted to say about warm up. So I'll let you like take it from there. Um. Well, I definitely see. It definitely changed my opinion about it, and I see more of the merit. Yeah. Are there any uh, right, final well, topics you want to go through? I still have a little bit. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is like getting to probably my favorite uh, few topics. First one is character select. You're in character select. Um, what do you do? Like, uh, do you wait for your opponent to pick their character? I like I understand that you only have one character, right? <laughs> right, uh -huh. But even so, is it worth it like to uh wait just to see like So okay. Mm. The merit to waiting, right, is mm -hmm. that um you give yourself more time to think about whatever matchup might be coming. Mm -hmm. Um you give yourself time to calm down, right? Yeah. Uh you're just buying a little bit of extra time to get yourself settled into whatever your seat you're sitting in mm -hmm. Anything like that, right? So yeah. I, I think the idea of picking second um, Is really valuable and mm. you can be as annoying as you want with it because if the <laughs> opponent's also trying to pick second <laughs> Just be stubborn. Yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, Just take as long as you need to to pick your character and mm. If you have multiple characters, it means you can also try to counterpick, um, <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> dirty, to be honest. Yeah. But uh, I like it. I like the idea of it. And there aren't really counterpicks in this game, uh, the same way there are in like League of Legends or whatever, uh -huh. or other fighting games. Uh, but I, I was just thinking, like, what what other strategies that can can people come up with? Mm -hmm. um, in, in the character select screen. So what I like to do, right? Um, I only have one character. You guys don't really know this because everyone knows my character pick. Um, but what I, I, I still do it just by habit sometimes. 
I'll go to whoever, right? And then I'll set my buttons over another character. Um, yeah. I do that all the time. I do that too. And uh, that really gets people thinking that, like, this is the character you're about to use. Um, and I think it's I think it's Four worth it. Game. What's up? Four move game. <laughs> Literally, put me in rage and get counter hit by every single one of them. You're dead. Um, and this one's probably gonna be a little bit short, just because there's not a whole lot that you can do. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's like just stuff like that. Pe most people wouldn't really think that there's uh, too much that could happen in the character select screen that can affect the outcome of the match. Oh no, that's Even where the game. You have one character. Look, the the round starts um, right before you sit down. Yes. I think people don't talk about that enough. The in a fighting game competition, the round starts right before you sit down. When you look your opponent in the eye, you smile at them, even though you're about to try to end their whole career, and you, you very politely say, you know, hey, where would you like to sit? And you fucking, it's already begun. It's already begun. Yeah. Don't let anybody scam you into sitting down first. Holy shit. Um, let them tell you what side they prefer, and then play rock, paper, scissors, you know? Um... Whatever side they say they want to be That's on. I need to work at, work on. What's that? I, I have like won every round of rock, paper, scissors I've had to play for a side. Oh, and really? It's hilarious. <laughs> and because usually I'll just give people the side they want. Oh, really? Yeah. In a game like this, um, where the like, hardware. I, I've beaten Josh from Jacksonville uh -huh. twice uh, in rock, paper, scissors. Undefeated like, in both ways. The one uh -huh. For the side. Yep. <laughs> uh, both times he threw paper first. Both times I threw scissors first. Dang. That's um, meta, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I made a read on them. You, know? uh, you saw his hand coming down? No, paper is like more pacifist, you know? So uh, if somebody's yeah. like non confrontational, they're more likely to throw paper. That's and true. And then for scissors, it's somebody who's more calculated. Uh huh. Right? And then Rock is like any big burly guy who's not like <laughs> the smartest looking dude. You know? I always throw <laughs> Rock, man. Fuck you. <laughs> or a Paul player. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm memeing, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. That's okay. something that I need to work on. That's actually one of our topics, so we can go right into it. Mm -hmm. Is uh, side select, right? Yeah. Um, so you think that it's like. Uh, really valuable to take the opposite side to what they prefer or is um, it more valuable to take the side that you prefer i think it's more valuable to take the side that you prefer 100 percent um i was more like talking only contextually in in the way that we're talking like if you're really trying to get one up on your opponent like you know you can fuck with them by making them pick the side that they don't like but i think you should be playing to your strengths way before you worry about your opponent's weaknesses that's an interesting way to look at it. And it comes from tennis also. I'm a big fan of uh, not really having weaknesses mm -hmm. in general. So the reason I let people take their side is because I want experience on both sides so that uh, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, so you don't become dependent on it, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Or I'll just get really good at rock, paper, scissors, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Darn. I thought you would whiff. Um, Me too. Yeah. Um, uh, well, the only reason, like, tennis specifically, the reason why you play to your strengths and, and not to avoid your weaknesses is because of how long those matches are. You have to... Um, to win right you can't just avoid losing i feel like sometimes in in a game with a punishment system right you can avoid losing and and win i feel like if you're playing really good um defensively you're shutting them out from what they maybe want to do 
which would involve like keeping them away from the side that they want to play on then you right. i feel like you have that opportunity to come away with wins <laughs> oh shit i ducked and went back i time. know <laughs> it's a little I the, the timing is know. different from back turn yeah um mm -hmm. okay so i have like six more topics but they're they're kind of smaller we're getting towards like the end of it okay uh so the first one is like uh or the next one is sort of a dual topic mm. uh it's like experience and unfamiliarity so that could be as a player or it could be a matchup mm -hmm. um or anything in between uh <clears throat> the first part is like experience just mm. generally the importance of it and yeah i guess we can start there as like i think that i think experience is better than skill mm -hmm. um i think if you are a very experienced player you don't have to be as good as the opponent and you can still win does I agree. that make sense? Yeah, I agree with that, uh, hundred percent. Because you're not nervous. Um... KO. <laughs> Round two. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> this shouldn't have happened. But yeah, like just like experience is like the most difficult thing to get and the most valuable thing to have i think like me could be like 60 years old and still beat people just because of his insane amount of experience yeah he's like 40 something uh, not 40 something he's like 30 something too so mm -hmm. you know his reaction times yeah. definitely impaired eating right <clears throat> so yeah, I just wanted to hear what you had to say about that. Yeah, so um, I agree. I think uh, experience is invaluable. There's there's almost nothing more important than it. And I feel like I've, I see a lot of people con themselves out of um, experience because they try to get the skill, like, you know, they try to get too much skill. I thought you were going to walk into it, darn <laughs> I should have. <laughs> um, they try to get too much <laughs> skill, and they never actually dive into like what's actually needed. Even the fact that maybe if you were able to really know what exact skills your field needs already. But I feel like unless you have a coach, you're not going to know that. So you need that experience to figure out you know, what skills are actually going to matter anyway in the first place. Right. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of people, they, they con themselves out of it because they wait until they can have like the most quality thing, um, to present the competitive field with, but then by the time they get there, like all the shit that they practice, it's not even, it's not even, uh, worth it or it's not even useful. Um, anyway, then they have to start from zero because you also have to learn how to, you also have to practice being competitive as well like we said earlier you know right um yeah and what do you think is the best way to get experience competing <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent Competing, competing. In what way? Like versus what kind of players? Um, as many as you like, can. Is it enough to just play with your friend? Learn, learn how to beat people worse than you. Learn how to play against people better than you, and learn how and find a rival. Like, honestly, you have a rival. Like, that's the best way. Like, if you had to choose one, find someone right at your level, mm -hmm. and then you keep pushing each other to keep going. That's the best way, hundred yeah. percent. The but, story of Jimmy J. Tran and Bronson. 
Kind of, but then a little bit more diverse than that. Like, still, like I said initially, still, you know, be able to beat other people, not just one person. Right. Yeah. That's also a thing. Yeah. The only person that Bronson can beat is Jimmy. Uh-huh. And Jimmy can beat everyone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But, yeah, so if you can find a rival, and I think a rival, I mean, that could be a whole other conversation in itself. About um, you know what a, uh, a healthy rivalry um, would be, but Jeez. Uh, yeah, I think competing in that way is the best way to get experience. You can't get experience just by playing the game. Um, you know, if you if your game is a game that has CPUs, you know, use that more to like hone your your skill. I mean, literally, that's honing your skills. That's not experience. That we just acknowledged as more important than skills. Right? Right. Um, so, yeah, if your game has CPUs, then, you know, use that to hone your skills. But if you want to get good at the game or you want to gain experience, you have to compete. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say compete, do you mean play in tournament or just show up to tournament? Uh, what? What kind of question is that? Um, like be in it, yeah. Play casuals versus strong players, or uh, play tournament matches. No, no, no. Play tournament matches. Like play whatever style of competition your sport or game is qualified in, basically. However, they quantify. Um, competition is where you're going to get your experience from yep and how about um the other one is unfamiliarity like let's say that you're in a tournament and you're against a yoshimitsu and you've never even seen that character picked before mm -hmm. like what do you do to approach that? Like, not only, um, not, not like specifically inside the right. match, mm -hmm. but, um, like as soon as they pick it, like what, what's your mindset? You really have to like, understand. For me, it's, mm -hmm. it's, Go ahead. it's like staying calm, uh, understanding that they might not be like a specialist character specialist. Right. Um, and realize that you're fighting an uphill battle right mm -hmm. um so it's like you shouldn't be too upset regardless of what the uh results are you can't be too upset you can just say okay like this is an obvious flaw in my mm -hmm. uh knowledge base mm -hmm. and i'm going to go into this match i'm going to try to win but i'm going to like save it for later as well mm -hmm. like think about what happened like what you know like uh, having a pretty calm attitude towards it yeah without like being super bloodthirsty like try to beat them mm -hmm. uh, i think you absolutely should try to win i just think that it's you know if you try too hard to win they're going to hit you with stuff you've never seen before and you're gonna get mad Yeah, I agree. And I think, yeah. like, uh, it's not to say, like, oh, well, you know, I don't know the character, so whatever happens, happens. But it's, it's right. exactly how you say is it. like, not to get so uh, crazy about the result once it's over. In the meantime, definitely, you know, play your tournament match. Try to win your tournament match because you're in a tournament. But what I was going to say, it goes uh, completely along with your sentiment, which is that... Um, you know, you need to understand that you entered a tournament and you didn't have all the knowledge in the first place. And that's just something that you did, and it's not the wrong thing, right? It's literally, you know, to, to do the opposite would be something that I've already acknowledged I don't really agree with, which is um, if you were to say, like, oh, I need to wait until I know everything about this game before I ever compete, 
that's just building your skill you're not really gaining experience from that right so you're doing the right oh my god what that recovers ducky <sighs> what a side uh, one thing i forgot to add was uh after that match regardless of what happens you need to go play that player more yeah 100 percent, exactly and like casual matches mm -hmm. and like either that or like try to ask for advice um in the matchup right so i think that's a really important part of dealing with unfamiliarity is like accepting that you're unfamiliar you're right accepting that you can't win if you don't know uh or like you're unlikely to win if you don't know you can win right uh because anything can happen in a first of two exactly right? you could just like lock him out of play right mm -hmm. um it is better and this is getting sort of in the gameplay so i'm not going to go too far into it mm -hmm. it is better to be very aggressive in matchups that you are unfamiliar with because you're not going to be able to defend anyway. Yeah. And, and it depends on the character too. If it's a Shaheen and you've never played a Shaheen before, like, you're probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Just don't press buttons too much. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, oh yeah, I, think I, that one's good. I agree. Um, but it's like, so you, you have to acknowledge that you came into that tournament not knowing and then understand that, like, you're doing the right thing because if you tried to wait until you had all these skills against all these characters, but then, like, you yeah. play against this player and you have this this knowledge of the character, but you don't know how they play their character, um, what's the point, you know? Versus now from from kind of the, the, the top down, or sorry, from the bottom up, you can see how they play and now that it's been brought to your attention because you you're playing this tournament against this character you're not familiar with now you can have a higher quality of skill you know acquisition against that character in exactly the way that you said to play casuals with them at that moment you know rather than because the alternative would be you skip that tournament because there's still a character you don't know much about and then yeah. you wouldn't you know just to, to learn how to play against that um that character but then you're not actually getting experience there. You're getting skills. And skills, you know, they're useful in a certain way, but you can't really build a foundation off of that if you're thinking about tournament meta um, and progress. Yeah. I mean, I've labbed every character, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've labbed strings. I've labbed punishment. I've labbed a bunch of stuff. That's the only reason I know as much as I know. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm not going to lose to a bear player whenever I finally meet one. Right. <laughs> Uh, so even if you did spend all this time in the lab versus that character, mm -hmm. it's way different from playing an actual person. Yeah, I agree. Um, especially a person who has their own ideas and strategies with that character. Exactly. Things that you might not have thought of. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, just having like a growth-oriented mindset in those uh, situations without giving up on winning. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we have three left. Uh, because okay. I deleted one. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is uh, the use of multiple characters yeah. and like managing it. Like, I know that you're a character specialist. What's your idea behind that? Is that just like a, a you only like King or what? What's up with that? Um, honestly, honestly, yeah. Like, I, I, I really, I really put a lot of value into being able to identify with your character like in the, in this context specifically it's hard for me to play characters that i couldn't see myself like um being as you know when falcon rom came out i was really excited uh for that because i'm really into muay thai so i was like oh i can see myself doing a lot of these moves so then it would be cool to like feel like i was doing a lot of these moves but then the way that literally his character model is I just I, I can't identify with him, you know. <laughs> like, He's got a, an hourglass uh -huh. figure and a tiny head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's the, and the long limbs, you know. I mean, King is much more like yeah. Jack than I am, but it's like similar proportions, I guess, you know. Um, right. But 
like even like I like playing Steve because I like to box you know I'm like and it's like it's kind of simple like that but at the same time like it makes sense to me um I I've considered playing the Bears um even outside of it just making sense um just because you know I mean for obvious reasons okay I'm not gonna get into that but um I even tried to play Kunimitsu when she came out just because I'm a nerd like I'm a huge weeb. I'd love to be a ninja in real life, you know, um, type stuff. So, but when it came down to it, um, that launched. What did you do? I don't. I back four. Is that airborne? Yeah. Okay. Because it crushes low. No, sorry, not back four. Forward four. I was trying to do forward four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's just that because I'm, I don't like the level that I play King at, I feel really weird, um, to play anyone else right now. Um, because I'm still thinking like, oh, there's more stuff that, oh, nice, nice, nice combo. That was a sick combo. That was cool. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and that was also a sick combo. Let's <laughs> try to sidewalk it. Um, you can't. Uh, so if you get knocked down, you can't sidewalk running moves. Oh, really? Oh, shit. There's an, you, yeah, your uh, Anakin was explaining that wall running moves are specifically there to beat uh, getting up off the ground. Like, oh, immediately. okay. I got you. Yeah, you Ooh. don't have enough frame advantage to sidestep. To anything. get up and... Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... Um, but yeah, for me, that's what it is. It's that I just, I'm not done with King. Like, I think when I really feel confident with King, um, like to where I feel like I have time to put to another character, I definitely will. Um, and I don't need to be like winning every tournament I ever enter with him. I just like, there are a little more, there's a little more that I personally want to be able to say I can do consistently, um, before I move on to someone else especially i'm also somewhat worried that i'd lose some stuff um going to another and character. you would yeah yep. exactly so i'm already holding on by a thread to this shit you know especially like if i take like a week off dude everything is gone man yep so for me, uh, coming from, like, uh, well, first I played chess, and then I played League of Legends, right? And even in League of Legends, I could play basically every character. And that's sort of how I gained the uh, skills to play multiple characters, like, the just the mindset in general, yeah. like, being able to compartmentalize them. And a, a little bit of it is just natural mm -hmm. to me. Um, but the way I view characters is that they're, like, a tool, right? They're right. a tool for a task. Some characters are better at solving or completing that task than others. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I have my favorite tool, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think most people do, like uh, just some instrument that they prefer using to solve things with. Um, and right now it's uh, Fakum Ram. It's not because like, first, he is a cool character. Right? That's why I can't really play female characters is because I don't really identify with them, like mm -hmm. you said. So there is some aspect to that. It's weird, though, because in League of Legends, I did not care. It just feels like in fighting games, it's a little bit more personal um, to pick and play a character because you have this character represent you. Yeah. Um, and, and in League of Legends, you don't. <laughs> right <laughs> because it's normal for everyone to play multiple characters <clears throat> and actually you're sort of looked down upon for being a character specialist in that game you're kind of useless uh, because for your you're not team, seen right? as a very good player yeah you're you're a one-trick pony yeah mm -hmm. um and it was weird coming over to tekken with that viewpoint of like oh you can only play one character you're not very good at the game mm. whereas now my viewpoint is as long as you can win. Yeah. Do whatever exactly. you want. I um, think as long as you enjoy that character mm -hmm. and they're good for you and for your play style. Right. The worst thing you can do is be a character specialist and like 
complain about your character, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> because, like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Like, you've chosen. You've walked yourself into this. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I didn't walk there. Um, <laughs> and your character is going to have flaws, of course. It's just up to you to, like, diminish them. And, like, deal with those flaws. Yeah. I died. Oh my god. It's like, wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. And, like, um, I literally... But from a strategic standpoint, mm -hmm. in Tekken, do you think it's more beneficial to be able to play at least two characters? Right, or yeah. What, what's... I do. I literally... Do you think that it's perfectly fine to play one? No. Um, that's what I was going to say is that, uh, I don't play one character by choice. Um, it's just, uh, I kind of, like, don't have another option right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely would play multiple if I felt more comfortable doing so. Um, and would that other character be Steve? <laughs> what the? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've wanted that to work for like two years. Oh shit. <laughs> um. Um. No, I mean, I honestly yeah. so like. You said. Uh. I would like to have a Kunimitsu, man. I think it'd be fun. She's really easy, dude. Yeah. Like, super easy. Like, even her combos are super easy. Yeah, I mean, I played her on release. Um, I was having fun, but I just couldn't remember shit, dude. Yeah, I can get that. Um, but oh, I know I do I do like, like other than mm -hmm. the other than her being like a ninja and you like liking the character why that's it bro oh there's no like strategic like oh covers, no yeah yeah, yeah. no because she's quicker like yeah she's Neutral. a lot she's a lot faster um she's got those fast <laughs> options like I would like to play Noctis but um I'm just not I think Noctis is a little too easy where I kind of get bored playing as him. Um, kind of doing the same. I think you would. Mm -hmm. I don't think you would make a very good Noctis player. I don't think honest. so either. Like your, uh, your use of like down jab mm -hmm. and like just uh, defensive tools in general yeah. is pretty good. And Noctis doesn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're already good at spacing. And the reason you play Noctis is that you're bad at spacing. <laughs> Dang. Or, or yeah. it's more like he has a range advantage, right? Right. And he's good against care players with bad spacing, right? Whereas, um, and he can get rushed down pretty easily. And King doesn't really alleviate those problems too much. Like, there's not much synergy, I mean. Yeah. Um, but that would be why. I mean, I would play Steve, uh, because of how quick his moves are, like his good tools are. I even thought about Paul for a second, um, just because, um, how much you get out of landing his stuff. I feel like I would be more, um, patient as a player if 
I was like comfortable thinking that um you know I didn't have to land so many moves to take a health bar. Like I don't use the max damage yeah. uh hopkick combos for example. Literally only because they just feel weird to me. Like back to one. Um I just don't like using mm -hmm. that move, you know? So like to hop kick, um uh standing four I think it is. Into back to one is like ugh, it's gross to me. Especially because, you know, learning Tekken, um, I spent so much time getting used to, um, you know, F3. Yep. Uh, combos, I think you know? Steve is a good fit for you in general. Uh, he uses a different skill set, mm -hmm. um, for the most part. Yeah. But he's really good about timing, and I think, like... As you, so, okay, the reasoning is that even though you're not playing king, I mm. think your king would improve by playing speed because you're 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 doing things based on timing. Mm -hmm. Timing is going to help your throw game because yeah. you know you're going to be able to land your throws as counter hit more often, and it makes them harder to break. Mm. Um, and like just developing that that like extra muscle without being bogged down by the bad habits or or flow charts of yeah. your character king, right? Yeah, so you can like sort of take a, a step away from them. Mm -hmm. um, is is my idea behind it? Uh, typically, whenever I'm choosing characters, uh, rule number one, they have to be like interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Like as a character, they have to be kind of cool. Um, Cosme, like Elisa, Zafina, are and Julia, uh, kind of, are are like basically the only female characters I have any interest in playing whatsoever. But uh, most of the male characters are just cooler to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's why I don't really, like, they're not my first choice, you know? And... <clears throat> and because of that, that's like quite a few characters, like, just, I'm not going to play. And then there's bears. I'm not going to play bears. Um, I'm not going to play Gigas. Or, uh, actually, Gigas is the only big character that I have a problem with. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like a process of elimination. Uh, and then I think about, like, what characters are good, right? Mm -hmm. What characters am I good at? I'm pretty bad with Leroy. Like, Leroy is good, and he, he like, has perfect synergy with, uh, with Bakumran. Like, all of his matchups are, like, the complete opposite, right? All of Bakuman's losing matchups are winning matchups for Leroy. Um, so I absolutely would play that character uh, if I wasn't so bad at him. Mm. And it's more of a thing where like he's also not super fun to play. So like I'm bad at him and he's not fun to play. So I don't want to get better at him. Ah. Well, like, if I was looking but at the character... What do you think about, um... Mm -hmm. What do you think about, like, generally? Uh, like, somebody who's wanting to become a tournament player. Like, what do you what do you think the best thing to do is? I think you... Should they look at tier lists? Should they play multiple characters? Like... I think you should look at a tier list just to cross off, like, um... Impossible stuff, you know? Look, I think a matchup chart is much more um, useful than a tier list in the first place if the game is well made. I think I have to put a ca caveat there because, like, don't take your little Mac to, to tournament. Like, please, like, stop. Just don't do that, for example, right? Um, but, like, a game like Tekken, I don't think we have to care so much about the tier list, so to say. Oh, man. Right. Um <laughs> Dude. Uh but I think you should still look at it to see, you know, what makes certain characters so bad, what makes certain characters like so long the tier list, so you don't make like a, a super uninformed choice. Or at least to know that you're playing a low tier character so that, you know, you can go from that point of uh of knowledge 
right? Right. <laughs> I knew the sidewall was there, I just didn't know what to do about it. Yeah. I like kind of got it. I think I could do that uh, taking me off. Um right. but I, yeah, I feel like That's Yeah, to at least start from there and then look at the matchup list. But uh for the original overarching question, I think you do need to have multiple characters ready for a tournament situation. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're gonna use the matchup list. Um figure out, you know, who your losing matchups are. And then find the opposite. Um, find the winning matchups against those characters. Well, so the worst matchup in Tekken is like 46 to uh, 54. Percent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look where we're at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, Falcon Ram has pretty good matchups uh, <laughs> all around. But... Like, in a game this balanced in terms of, like, win rates, mm -hmm. do you think it's still as important? I think it comes down to preference. Like, who do you like fighting these characters with? Right. Like, what kind of tools do you think are valuable versus them? Mm -hmm. I, I do agree with that. Um, because this game, they've given you an answer for everything, you know? Um... So it should, it really should just be like that kind of personal preference because you have things you can do with pretty much every character right. against pretty much every character, you know? Um, and it, it, we're kind of like spoiled in that way. Um, we don't really have crazy losing matchups, uh, in this game. Um, so yeah, I would definitely play who you, uh, play who you see yourself winning with, you know? Um, but I think it's at the same time, if you have a character you like, but you hate playing your character against a certain character, don't be afraid to pick the, another matchup because, um, you can, uh, just because, like, don't just automatically default to saying, you know, Tekken is so balanced, I should be able to win with whoever. Right. So I should stick with my, you know, character. Like, definitely do not be afraid to. Uh oh. Dang. Uh oh. To go ahead and make that, um, that change. All right. Uh, last two topics we probably should have covered earlier, but it's like the meta game between rounds and between matches. So let's say you're in a tournament match, and um, actually the way I worded this is confusing. So when I say rounds, I mean games in a set, right? So like game one, game two. Um, what are like the general like strategies to do? I think for one thing, taking as long as you need to, uh, if you've lost the match, mm -hmm. right? You, lo you lose the first match. I would probably recommend going to character select, even if you're not changing character. Mm -hmm. You can like, I think you have like 60 seconds or something. Yeah. Um, TWT rules. Mm -hmm. uh, and you should take that time to one ice your opponent to kind of hold their their winning momentum mm -hmm. um i think you should take a, a drink of water think about like a few things uh that not necessarily things that went wrong more of like 
things that went right. Right. You know, what do you I think that's see more, more useful. Like yeah. what what went well in mm -hmm. that match? Yeah. And how can you repeat that? Um, and you should consider what exactly they did to beat you. Like if there was a big pattern, like he just threw you over and over, like maybe you should start ducking because you're obviously not breaking throws. Or you can like try sidestepping and blocking to beat the throws. Um, um, if he's mashing, you can counter hit him or something like that. Right. Um, like, ha what what would you like consider like a viable uh, thing to do in between games of a set? <laughs> Um, exactly that. It's take the time, take that time outside of the game to, you know, co like compile the data that you just received. Um, don't force yourself to like do it within, um, you know, within the match because there's all that pressure from the match itself and whatnot. It's gonna be hard to really put that game plan together. Um, so you should do exactly that. Uh, take that time, you know, I don't think I would go so far as to go to character select um, It depends on how I lost like if I did want to change the stage, but sometimes like keeping the variable Keeping less variables will help me like have my data have to do with what's going on um, So I'd be more inclined to want to stay where I'm at We both suck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I didn't understand. Oh my god. I was <laughs> trying to get off the ground. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I accidentally held, uh, held down. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah. I think going to character select is never not worth it. Not that I... I don't do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I think it is something that I should do. Um, because like you know you can take time think about if you're going to character swap even if you're not going to and then you have time to think about your uh, stage that you want if you don't character swap mm -hmm. Um, and the other one is between matches. So you either won or lost your first match, right, of the tournament. What do you do? Like, let's say there's 30 minutes before your next match or something. Um, and let's say, like, you've already eaten, stuff like that. Like, do you... Do you go play casuals or do you wait and give yourself a little bit of time to rest? Uh, to rest? <coughs> um, again, uh, it depends. And this is the last last topic, by the way. It de it depends. It depends on like what's been going on. You know, do you if if I want to keep up what I'm doing? I don't know. May maybe my answer is reverse. If I want to keep up what I'm doing, I'll probably stop playing. I'll probably go rest and relax. Um, and because I have a mental, I have an ability to maintain um, where I'm at, but I, I also have a lack of ability of maintaining it if I've used it, right? So if I go play casuals, I'll probably stay at that level and then burn out and then go back to the matches and tournament, yeah. And like, oh, you know, <laughs> like I got to start over. Um, but if I wanted something new, then I would definitely play casuals and like burn out whatever like poor playing I was doing. So that I can get back into my tournament um, status. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I'm used to, at, at like a high competitive level, um, 
I'm used to there being like six or so hours in between my matches, right? Mm -hmm. In chess, uh, like the first match would be at like 8 a.m. or something, and you would uh, you'd get there on time, right? You'd play your match. Maybe it goes four hours. Then you like go get something to eat if you need some something to eat, and we would either review our games or we would sleep mm. or we would like chill and watch TV. Right. Yeah. Um, very rarely did we continue to play. Yeah. And that's because it's chess. So like, no matter what, there's like no warming up in chess, right? It's like, you know, you only have a certain amount of like brain juice. And if you keep playing, you're just going to, uh, remove your ability to play well. Right. Exactly. Yep. So I, I think if you are reliant on a character that like demands the most out of you, you probably should go play um, casual matches mm. just to remain warm. If you think you're already like exactly where you want, wow, that went like right through you. Uh, if you're already exactly where you want to be gameplay wise, like you said, I would probably just chill. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, of course, drink water. Uh, maybe get a snack. If um, you're not already what yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically all I had. Uh, did you have anything that you really wanted to talk about? No, that was um, really in depth. Like thinking about the tournaments that we've played this year and the tournaments that I've seen you enter as well. Um, I really liked that mm -hmm. kind of overview of thoughts, for sure. I guess we could like do a short recap. So like, if we were giving advice to a, a new tournament player, mm -hmm. let's say that they've been playing Tekken for a little while. Yeah. And uh, we were just giving them like a few general rules for a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? Um, I mean, overall, I would have to make sure that they're. I would start with their attitude and make sure that their attitude is in the right spot. You know, like first of all, this is it, this is assuming that they're playing a tournament because they've reached a competitive level. Uh, we didn't really talk about that, but like being at a competitive level is kind of. Um, a prerequisite because if you're not there, you probably won't actually be get like you won't have a, a be close enough to a skill level to actually be able to gain experience from um, the competition, right? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, so at least you have to be at a skill level to be you know quote unquote competitive. So that aside, we don't have to worry about you know what skills they have or what are they doing. It's about what are they going to get out of it. Because that's what matters the most. It's not really... And what part are they at in their career? Are they entering this tournament because, hey, you should be winning tournaments like these? Or are they entering this tournament as part of the tournaments that they're using to learn how to play tournaments and how to practice, um, you know, their tournament uh, mentality? Right. It was a low at that range. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, was that the only thing, or? I really, I yeah, no, no, that's really it. That's really the only thing for me. I see. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think you're right. I think you're wasting your time and money if you're going to a tournament just to get cheese. Um, with a few exceptions, uh, like if it's you know a Zafina or something you probably shouldn't be getting cheesed by a Zafina because her cheese is so bad like she has nothing you know mm -hmm. um it feels like she has a lot but it's all fake um all of her stances are fake like oh you were dead God. what Oh my god, bro. This is ridiculous. 
Um, yeah, I think probably the most important uh, aspect of it is like attitude, like being able to grow, especially considering yeah. like. Actually, no. First, you need a goal in mind. Uh, like, right. what are you playing for? Are yeah. you trying to like win the world championship? Or are you like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> my move. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing there? What are you trying to get out of it? Are you just having a good time meeting friends? Like, maybe you don't need to like dedicate your life to it. Then, you mm -hmm. know. And. Um, <laughs> uh, but let's say that you were trying to be like the absolute best player in the world, right? Mm -hmm. I ducked your mid, by the way. I know. Armor King's cringe. <laughs> Man, my brain, my brain is complete mush. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll just wrap up, uh, in the lobby. <laughs> okay. I think, um, generally, uh, you need to have your, like, uh, an, an actual goal in mind, and you need experience first. Mm -hmm. So, before you even really pick a character, <coughs> right, you need to, like, learn the game, get to a competitive level, stop being cheese. Yeah. Um, like, obviously have a character that you're playing, but it doesn't have to be something that, like, you're marrying, you know? Right. <laughs> uh, and from that point you have to take care of your body as if you as if it were your job really right um like you need to uh first you have to look after like bills stuff like that mm -hmm. right all of these responsibilities that you already have and then with whatever time you have left you have to say like let's say you have four hours of free time say like you have a four hour shift Right. Yeah. What would what should I be doing? Mm -hmm. Should I go do like cardio stuff like that, mm -hmm. and like use those hours as investment into the future of your play? Um, because you're not going to see results immediately, so it really is an investment. Right. Um, but it's like as long as you're growing as a player, and you're investing these hours into exercise and health and stuff like that, somebody who's invested just as many gameplay hours as you mm -hmm. you're probably going to beat them because you're you're most likely going to be around the same level right um and if you're if you're just in better shape right you're gonna be able to like make the most of these advantages that you're getting mm -hmm. i i think the secret to competitive anything is the uh culmination of like small advantages like you, you know how in like uh world of warcraft or something you have a bunch of passives and it's all like plus uh 0 0.1 percent <laughs> yeah uh -huh. and like plus two percent this literally like yeah. it's like a and you have like a thousand of them you have these <laughs> like tiny small perks that's exactly how you win I yeah think. you that take advantage sense. of all of these tiny things and then you like you min max the hell out of it yeah um and to me, that's really fun to think about, like mm -hmm. really exciting saying like, oh, I have to get up this morning and go to the gym uh, so that I can go beat Arslan Ash in Ukraine at a tournament. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> like, that's pretty sick, mm -hmm. honestly. Or like, I have to eat the salad so that or, or whatever you're eating. Yeah. Um, so that I don't get snake edged by Jimmy G. Tran. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's literally beautiful. And it's like, you know, when I when I'm. When I'm giving like a tennis lesson, for example, that's always exactly what I start with. So I probably shouldn't have thought of it from a FGC standpoint because I I've never been in a position to like tell like to give someone advice for a tournament. But for tennis, it's the same thing. I, I you start with a goal. You always start with a goal because it's not always just about progress. You have to know where you are to even know what what is progress, what is in front of you, and what's in reach in front mm -hmm. of you. You know, so. I'll ask people to tell me what their goal is um, so I can get an idea of, of how they view their position and also, or I'll give them a goal if I've already been coaching them so that I can help them un like ascertain 
their position and what's reasonable and where they should be um, headed towards. And like, it's so such an important thing to tie into exactly what you're talking about, where when you have a goal and you feel like you want to reach it or you should reach it, then everything that you do towards that goal becomes exciting, becomes a part of that goal, becomes a part of your like move towards success. So even things that you might feel like are outside of it or don't have to do with it, suddenly you can make them resonate with what you're ultimately trying to do. So like you might not like eating salads, but suddenly you love eating a salad if it's going to give you that extra <laughs> reaction time. Or yeah. if even more, even better, if you already played that tournament and you already, you know, ducked the high part of one of Arslan's strings um, and then launched him and it, and you feel like it was because you ate that salad and that lets you <laughs> eat that salad again the next time you sit down right. for a meal. And then it, it cycles in a positive way um, these things that lead to progress they're not success but they lead to progress for you um right. so that you're constantly moving you know you never you never get stagnant with anything but you're able to do more because you're able to make it justified by this thing that you're ultimately trying to do and um that's actually the reason why i started this channel was to talk about things like that was to bridge the gap between things that gamers feel like are outside of gaming and often neglect, especially when it comes to their health, and really bridge the gap and let them realize like how much it definitely has to do with even something like performance, um, like in a, in a video game uh, situation. But just in general, like how everything you do is connected to everything you do. You know, so you really have yeah. to like maintain your well-roundedness um, across the board, no matter what it's for. And that's what I would yeah, tell I mean anybody looking to be like not just tournament ready but like if you're a human being like that's what i want to say to you you know yeah i mean um the the like and i i never really had the perspective of like oh it it ha doesn't have anything to do with it because my like whole view on like people in general or like somebody trying to accomplish something mm -hmm. is that like all a person is is a collection of variables, right? Right. And then their product is a result of those variables and the the interactions. So, of course, everything, every single action uh, that that you've done or uh, like has happened to you mm -hmm. will affect whatever your output is. Um, and the great part about you know having. Um, the ability to make decisions is that you get to manipulate those variables into achieving whatever you want to achieve. Mm. So, uh, thinking like a game, a match of Tekken or whatever is only dependent on what happens in the match is like missing the whole point. Yeah. Like that is just, that is such a small part of it. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't even say it's 50%. I think it's no. less than 50%. It's probably 10%. Uh, probably 10% <laughs> of what happens in that yeah, match honestly. happens in that match. Yep. Because think of how long that match goes on for. Like, yeah. a match in Tekken mm -hmm. is like maybe five minutes. Right, exactly. One game. And like you said earlier, a, a back and forth set would be about 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that the entire month leading up to your tournament, you're going to let it all revolve around that 15 minutes yeah. inside the match? Yeah. That 5 to 15 minutes or whatever? Exactly. Like, it could be 3 minutes, honestly. Literally. You just get, like... Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, having, like, this expanded mindset where um, your, your motivation comes from the things that you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So, like... If you want to do this, then uh, it's best for you to do this as well. So, yeah. like, uh, create compounding synergies or whatever. Mm. Anyway, my brain <laughs> is like syrup. I think I think we're it's gonna nothing. I think it's we're gonna get better at that. I think that nothing. was a really good first like go at it. Um, we'll just keep getting better every yeah. time. I mean, literally exactly what we were talking about is this you know just getting into it and gaining experience rather than trying to wait for skill and um 
I had a lot of fun. I mean, that was like I I could we I could do this often, you know, if you're interested. Yeah, I mean, I would be uh, better at it if we weren't playing while we did it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel the same way, ditto. But I do think that it, it can be more entertaining if we're also playing. So, right. like, like you said earlier, uh, a back and forth type thing. Like, maybe next time we can, like, uh, on, on the Discord thing, we can share a screen. So, like, mm -hmm. you could pull up a video or something, or right. some footage. Um, and then we can just, like, uh, be chatting with it in the background right. or like making comments on it. Yeah, um, exactly. We could do a lot with this. We could like do commentary. We could do analysis. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll brainstorm um, later on, but um, we'll go ahead and wrap up this one though. Um, this was really in depth about, you know, the things surrounding a tournament. And as much as we just acknowledge that about 10% of the match happens because of what happens in the match, um, we really talked about that 90%. Um, today, so I really appreciate you uh, spending the time coming up with all those topics for us and um, having just really good questions to uh, kind of dive in and, and give some perspective on. Appreciate that, bro. Yeah, that was like four hours of uh, of like tournament metagame. Yeah, <laughs> which and it was just easy to talk oh, about. <laughs> yeah, it was really. Um, um, I did get rid of a few of the um, topics just because they were either redundant or mm -hmm. they didn't really meet uh yeah. the qualification of it not being in the match itself right um but even uh, I you think know having structure mm -hmm. is, is really helpful right and you know a lot of the stuff we touched on we kind of wove in and out of tangents um we'll be able to branch off and, and continue weaving with the next one we probably would be able to bring up some of this stuff um even in the next topic uh and you know continue so we'll we'll have time to like um talk about anything that you deleted or like to revisit anything because uh you know <laughs> we covered a lot yeah um huge shout out to roga for staying for so long um i'm sorry i didn't really like respond much to the chat because uh, i was kind of juggling the gameplay with the uh ideas we're bringing up but normally the format will be um i'll put in a little bit more time to interact with um anybody who comes by because I would like it to be more interactive, like as we're bringing up stuff, if someone in chat has a different perspective or wants to add on to something, um, because we are talking about these things for a while, even with a chat delay, like I feel like they'd be easily a part of the conversation. So um, from now on, I'm definitely going to be a little better about setting time aside for um, Next. replies to chat. It can... Uh... It can be like interwoven too. Exactly. So like I'll, I'll have the topics written down. So mm -hmm. like if somebody says something, we can just like stop and like talk about whatever they said. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's like a question or something. Yeah, like a question of their own to start a new topic. Even we we would uh, be grateful mm -hmm. for. So, um, but yeah. So huge shout out to Roga. Huge shout out to you, Chance, for coming out, and huge shout out to everybody else who came by, and lent an ear. Um, we're gonna do this again relatively soon um but it's going to be more gameplay through the week i don't know what i'm going to play yet i might end up buying knockout city um but we'll see just follow the twitter yeah. and i'll keep everyone informed. There, there's a huge summer sale on steam by the way yeah like there lot, is like a dude. lot of games off or something yeah it's pretty ridiculous it's crazy uh, so another thing tuesday, mm -hmm. are you free at all on tuesday yeah. uh possibly i think it's supposed to rain uh i can check again but uh, I was thinking about going back down for a, a weekly. Uh, oh, it, it right. Just really depends. Yeah. Yeah. What? We'll, um. Well. Yeah. I let's. We'll like, talk about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. So thanks again for everybody who came by. Uh. We will be back soon. We're starting to stream more consistently now. So. I'm really going to try to keep that up. And I'm getting these videos up on the YouTube channel um, a lot sooner after the stream. So look out for that as well. All the information is on the page um, if you give a quick scroll. So much love. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Happy 4th of July. Forgot today was a holiday. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a thing that people celebrate. Right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. All right, you guys. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> Bye. Bye.